Okay, I think we're on. Yep, we are live. Okay, we're going to be starting out here with this uh, broadcast tonight about Robert Breaker. And um, I just want to say a couple of things before we actually play his, you know, sermon. Um, hopefully everybody has something that they can puke in if they need to. Listening to the guy preaching. But I uh, uh, just want to say to your, the followers of Robert Breaker, um, you would do well to just consider some of the points that are going to be brought up tonight. We're going to be answering this guy from the scriptures. Um, he is a fake. He is a fraud. And, uh, you know, you can he can say a lot of good things. But if he's off on the gospel, then that's, you know, that's a real big problem. And so um, it's it's really important to consider these things. Uh, you know, just turn to a verse of scripture here real quickly before we get started. Because I know I get a lot of his people. And, and by the way, if you're you know one of his followers, please don't do profanity in the comments and things. I know it's a mark of how spiritual him and his followers are. Um, but you know, it just it's it's just not appropriate. I mean, my word, you know, control your speech. Um First Peter chapter four, verse 17 says, For time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Um, Robert Breaker does not obey the gospel of God. Uh, Robert Breaker changes uh, the gospel of God. He actually, you will see in this video that we're going to be playing, he changes the text of the King James Bible, plainly changes it. And we're going to be talking about this thing as we go. And uh, the man is a liar and a deceiver. And uh, you need to consider these things if you're one of his followers. So with that said, as a little introduction here, and, and I will say one other thing before we get started, um, and that is all four of us here, um, none of us believe in quick prayerism, okay? So when we say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that doesn't mean that anybody that's forced into a little prayer by a Hiles Anderson type of, you know, ultra soul winning type of campaign. You just bow your, everybody, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around and just repeat this prayer that if they repeat it, they're instantly saved. We don't believe that. We do not teach that. Um, prayer in that sense is not going to save somebody. Uh, you have to come to the end of yourself, come to the end of your self-righteousness. And when you do, you're naturally going to be calling out to the Lord. Um, and, you know, you get these people and they'll say, what if they're, you know, deaf mute or something like this? You're still going to be calling upon the name of the Lord, you know, in your prayers and your, in your mind and whatever else. Okay. These people, uh, they come up with all kinds of stuff, but the whole point is what we believe and teach is a sinner has to come to the end of themselves and stop thinking that they are good enough to get to heaven. And when they do, they're naturally going to want to call out to the Lord and say, I believe what the Bible says. We don't reject belief. It gets put on us as well. They believe what the Bible says. They believe the gospel. And, and as a natural reaction to that, they call out to God and say, please save me. Okay. And there's, they're not going to understand things like the blood atonement and, you know, the death, burial and resurrection and whatever else. They might not understand that at the point of salvation. They're just going to understand. I can't get to heaven. Jesus died for my sins, was buried, rose again. I don't even know what all happened there or whatever else, but I believe that. And that's what I'm going to put my faith in. God, can you please save me? That's what we teach, just to boil it down into a simple form. Okay. So we're going to go now to the actual video. Um, I have two screens, so it's kind of confusing for me here. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, let's get started. With this and uh, if any of you want to say something just wave your hand you know so i can see it and i'll pause it and then you can comment got it, got it. here we go welcome back i'm robert breaker preacher of angels and spanish and english speaking people and i have a message prepared for you today that uh, i believe is very important i've preached on this oh several times over the years and and i will continue to do so this is such an important message and this is something that uh, uh, some people would say defines my ministry. Okay, <laughs> whatever. This is really what it all boils down to, whether you're a true Christian or not, based upon whether or not you understand and believe what the Bible teaches. 
There are a lot of people out there saying they're Bible believers. A lot of them say they're King James Bible believers. But they're preaching another gospel, not the true gospel of salvation. So what I want to do today is I want to cover this topic. I've talked about this several times before, but I want to explain it, hopefully, in a way that people can understand. A lot of people have said some things about me that just aren't true. And I've always wondered, <laughs> why would they do that? Unless they just don't understand and maybe they're not at the same level of understanding of, of the Bible. Maybe they're still learning. So rather than attack them and, and put them down like they do me, well, I want to take them under my wing and say, well, let me let me show you and expound it to you the way of the Lord more perfectly, like the Bible says in the book of Acts. So what I want to do today is I understand that a lot of times we talk about things and people have understanding of what they think a person is saying because they define words differently. We need to make sure that the definitions of different words in the Bible, we look at this dictionary, we look at the scriptures, we understand what those words mean. We don't want to take a word in the Bible and define it the way we want it to be. We have to understand it means it the way the Bible says. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at this teaching and this doctrine today. Remember, we are in the last days. We are in the last days, according to the Bible in which there will be a time of apostasy. And so this apostasy in the last days is right before the rapture. And this is it. This is the time of apostasy. And it's a time of a falling away from the truth. The Bible doesn't say in the last days people will finally get the truth and start preaching it. No, the Bible says in the last days people will fall away from what the truth is and begin teaching things that aren't true. So what I want to do today is I want to remind you of what the Bible teaches and has taught since the time of Paul in the hopes that you'll get a hold of this teaching. Now, I received many, many, many emails about this, and many people have told me, Brother Breaker, thank you for preaching on this. It helped me to get saved. So I want to make sure that I'm faithful um, every so often preaching a message on this because I want people to get saved. To me, it's all about people getting saved, and I don't want people to be deceived. Now there's another gospel going around today, a bloodless gospel being preached today by many people who claim to be Christians. And it's a gospel that leaves out the blood of Jesus. And I, yeah, let me just pause it there for a minute. Um, none of us leave out the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, again, he's a liar, total liar. And uh, you'll see plenty of lies throughout this thing. Continue. That's all. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the blood-stained gospel. We're going to look at the scriptures. We're going to look at how the Bible says to be saved. And we're going to look at the false teaching that people twist the gospel into uh, preaching something different that doesn't always say. Matter of fact, it leaves people lost, makes people false converts many times. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at this topic, asking without trusting. Asking God to save you without believing in the gospel. And this is the basic premise and the basic question of this message. Is it possible to ask God to save you without trusting in the gospel? A lot of people have done that. A lot of people over the years have said, well, God, I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. Amen. And then they say, well, I'm saved. But are they saved? Well, the Bible said... Um. Again, you're going to see this mocking thing, which really, really ticks me off about this guy. I was, just, yeah, I was about to say the exact same thing. Yeah, I'd just like to just punch him in the face. I'm sorry, I'm not, you know, no striker. I realize, but it just, it just, oh, angers me. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, somebody that comes along and prays a prayer falsely, like a Jack Hiles convert or whatever else, they're not fervently saying, "God, please save me." They're not fervently saying that. You know, it's, it's. Oh, it just makes me so mad. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to say anything there? I will say this because he's already, because we've already kind of, you know, well, he's kind of hinted at it towards it. This guy is so condescending. He always just like looks down upon you like he's someone special. Like every single time it's like some video. And that, and I mean, that is like classic narcissism. Every single narcissist will accuse you of the very thing they are. And that's what he does every single time. Yep. Yeah, I've seen in comments. I've seen him. I've actually seen him go back and forth with you, brother JT, a good couple of times. And he's like, "Oh, JT, you just don't understand that condescending oh, kind yeah. of, oh, you yeah. know, attitude. It's, it's ridiculous." 
Yeah, after I did that video on the Blood Atonement, he got so triggered. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, wow. tried to bribe me with money one year. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember that. that was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's continue. Says, no, because they must believe something. If all they've done was ask for salvation, but they've never believed or trusted, then they're not saved. Now, some people will say, well, this is just a silly argument. What a straw dummy. There's no, that never happens. Oh, I wish you could read my emails and see how often that has happened. So many people have emailed me and say, Brother Breaker, we, we used to watch YouTube and different preachers and we were so confused and had no idea how to be saved. And they told us, just ask God to save you. So we and get down by our bed every night. Oh, God, please save me. Oh, God, please save me. Okay. Uh, here's another one of these arguments that he uses. He says it of himself. I heard his testimony. And he says, I just prayed every night, every night. I have never known anyone to do that. Okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's some kind of weird Catholic thing or something. You know, just I'll pray to be saved every single night. Or, huh? <laughs> what in the world? You know, and see what he'll do is what he's doing with this, this video here. He is setting people up to think that, you know, asking without trusting is the, is the issue. That's not really the issue here. He, what he's trying to go after is people praying to be saved. So he'll use, he sets up the straw dummy here and he'll say, um, the straw man argument, I'll say it that way. You know, he's the dummy, but um, he'll set this whole thing up and he'll say, see, people that ask when they don't really understand the, the gospel, therefore, you don't ask to be saved. See, that's mm -hmm. what he's doing with this. And you'll yeah. see that later on. He changes the text of Romans chapter 10. You will yeah. see him do it. Because he cannot stand the thing of people, you know, having to lower his pride. See, that's the whole issue here. He does not want to lower his pride enough to, to get on his knees before a holy, righteous God and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's the issue here. You know, it's an intellectual belief is all that it is. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. And we didn't know. We had never heard the gospel. All we knew was people said, just ask God to save you. So we asked him over and over and over. Never had any assurance of salvation. Never knew we were saved. I said, well, 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 when did you get saved? Well, the first time that I ever heard the gospel was your preaching, Robert Breaker. And that's when I heard the gospel and understood. That's when I trusted Christ. Okay, so, that's what I got saved. so don't give me this garbage that, no, if a person asks God to save them, then they're saved. No, if they ask without trusting they're lost, and they need <laughs> to hear the gospel and understand. Yeah, chapter one and verse thirteen. So I believe this is a very important message and something that we need to look at because this happens all the time. You see, the last days we're in apostasy. A lot of churches they preach a message of well, just ask God to save you, and they never mention the blood of Christ. They never mention the true gospel of salvation. Verse Corinthians fifteen one through four. So they tell people just ask, and so then they tell. He, okay. he always does this thing where he's like, where he always quotes First Corinthians, and yet there's like, there's no blood mentioned there. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Like, and, well, because the thing is, in, in this video, I'm pretty sure he does it. He always focuses on the word "how." It's like, it's like, yeah, how did he die? Gee, I don't know, a cross maybe. You know, it's like, I mean, again, like, again, not, like you said, Brian, none of us are dying in the blood atonement. It's there, but that's not necessary for salvation. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're not going to understand that. You know, yeah. so it, even Rockman said that in his in his commentary. You know, I mean, show me in scripture where it says that you have to believe the blood to be saved. There's not one. Yeah, go right. to the book. Go, go to the book of Acts and find one verse where Paul has preached any of that. Yep. All right, let's continue. Tell a person that you're saved because you're asked. But is that how it works? I mean, did Jesus Christ die on the cross for our sins or didn't he? If you are saved just by asking God to save you, then why did Jesus die? Well, he could have just called some new prophet and said, okay, we're going to start a New Testament and just go tell everybody, whoever asked me to save them, I'll save them because they asked. But that's not what Jesus did. No, he was born. Yeah, yeah. You moron. I'm sorry. Give me a break. Nobody that's going to ask God to please save me is going to just leave out the cross and look for some other way of salvation. I'm, I don't want the cross. Yeah. I'm just going to, you know, <laughs> come yeah. up with these arguments. My word. So let's continue. Born 
of a virgin, lived 33 years, and he shed his blood and he died on the cross because he had to do that in order to give us forgiveness. And then he says, now, if you'll believe, if you'll trust, if you believe, then you'll be saved. So I see in the world in which we live, there's a lot of people that have asked God to save them, but they've never believed in the gospel. And I see them as false converts, as false Christians, and they need to hear the gospel and believe it. Now you say, Robert Breaker, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Well, that's what my old pastor used to say. I graduated from the Pensacola Bible Institute, you know, Dr. Peter Ruckman. It, yeah, my old pastor, the one that kicked you out? <laughs> yeah. Because you're a stinking oh, heretic? Oh, well, let's not talk about that. And uh, this is a letter from Peter Ruckman to my dad. And this letter my dad wrote to, to Peter Ruckman in 1993, and he asked him, uh, Dr. Ruckman, do you believe people are, are saved just because they ask God to save them? Do you think that asking is what saves, or do you believe that believing is what saves? And Dr. Ruckman wrote back to my father, and here's what he says. And I want you to, I want you to read this with me. So, you see, Robert Breaker is not teaching heresy. He's teaching what he taught. He was taught in Bible school from his teacher. He says, yeah. now, <clears throat> well, up here, he says, I don't teach anybody they're saved until they realize their own righteousness will land them in hell. I believe a man has to be saved from something, and I believe he's saved from hell. And I believe until he sees his own goodness can't save him, the prayers don't amount to a hill of beans. Now, a man can ask Jesus Christ to save him, and then months later or years later, the Lord may cash in and bring the man to the point of salvation because he asked. Because the book says, whosoever shall call for the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if he doesn't give up his self-righteousness, the prayer is useless. Okay? So what happens if a person asks God to save them, but they're not trusting in the gospel? Or they're trusting in their own righteousness, or in their church attendance, or in their water baptism, or in their works. What if they're trusting in something other than the atonement of Christ, and they ask God to save them? Well, this guy, Peter Ruckman, says they're still lost. He's obviously, obviously, yeah. you know, this isn't saying anything, you know, that we don't teach ourselves. I mean, my word. And besides, Peter Ruckman's not the standard. The Bible's the standard. You know. Is a man can ask God to save him, and then later God will bring him to the point of salvation because he asked. What does that mean? That means God's going to bring him the gospel. He comes to God. He says, God, I want to be saved. God says, write, write that down, Michael. This guy wants salvation. Have this guy over here go preach the gospel to him so he can believe. Because we're saved when we believe, not when we ask. Uh, 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 uh. Right there. Hmm. You see what he did? Yep. You see how he did it? You know, we're saved when we believe, not when we ask. That's not what Ruckman was saying. You see, this this guy is a, there are devil spirits in this man, I guarantee you. I've been in ministry for a long time, and I've dealt with a lot of people face-to-face -face in Baptist churches. I know this kind of spirit. This guy is very, very wicked, right? This, this is not just his own flesh that's making him say these things. This is This guy is evil, okay? What he just did there, he said, shows what Ruckman says. Ruckman says if some guy asks, but he still has his self-righteousness. His 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 prayer didn't mean anything, obviously. Years later, when he actually understands the gospel, believes, that doesn't mean he's not going to ask again. Okay? The Lord will save him when he finally comes to the end of himself, certainly. But then what Breaker does is he shows that, and then he says, see, it's when you believe, not when you ask. Leaving out the fact that it was a false, you know, self-righteous prayer that was prayed. You know, mm -hmm. in, in the example, it's deception. Exactly. You know, and, and if you read like Romans 10, uh, 13 through 17, it shows you the progression of how you get to the point of calling. So it doesn't refute calling. You, you, yeah, you, you have to believe in the gospel, the facts, and then you trust and you rely on, then you call out, you know. Yeah. All right, let's continue. And he says here, in regards to the blood, I may have made some remark about understanding fully the blood atonement or understanding fully the crucifixion. And in that sense, the graduates made of God. So he he's telling you that trusting the blood atonement of Christ. So even my old pastor, Peter Ruckman, saw that salvation is by trusting nothing but the blood atonement of Jesus Christ to save. My. Well, Robert Breaker's not a heretic, and yet today there are people that say, oh, Robert Breaker's a heretic. And you say, why? Well, he's against asking God to save you. Well, he's against uh, saying a prayer for salvation. Well, no. What I'm against is Mark. telling someone that the prayer itself saves them. 
or telling someone that the asking is what saves them. Because that's not what the Bible teaches, and that's not what my old Bible teacher taught. The Bible says we're saved when we believe. And what I've seen in my ministry over the years is there's many, many people that don't want to go to hell, so they come to God and they say, oh, God, save me. But yeah. they heard the gospel and never believed the gospel, so they're still lost. And later they finally hear it, and that's when they get saved. It's not when they ask God to save them. It's when they believe the gospel. And I'm going to prove that from the scriptures today. And I get so many emails from people that say that and say, Brother Breaker, I used to watch this guy on YouTube. And he claims to be a King James Bible believer. And all he ever says is just ask God to save you. Ask God to save you. Ask God to save you. If you don't ask God to save you, you'll go to hell. And I used to watch him and I was lost. And I said, well, when did you get saved? And, and they said, well, I thought I was saved because I asked God to save me. And, and, and I asked him every night over and over. But I didn't get saved till I watched your video. And I heard the gospel for the first time. I understood about the blood atonement. And that's when I got saved, when I believed. Wow, isn't that something? <laughs> you know? People can't get saved until they watch Robert Breaker. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Narcissist. Yeah. Incredible. Absolutely. Really? So were you saved when you asked God to save you? No. When did you get saved? When you believed the God. And I rejoiced with them. And I said, now, do you doubt it? No, I don't doubt it, Brother Breaker. Why? Because they know they're saved. Yep. It's all intellectual. Exactly, brother. You know, it's so funny. How many people have come out and they say, I used to be a Christian. I used to believe in Jesus, and now I'm an atheist. Yeah. Something bad happened in my life. See, according to Faker Breaker here, if somebody believes, then they never stop believing, which is an absolute total lie. And if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, unless you have believed in vain. Yeah. You know, yeah. right there in, the, in the, the gospel that I preach, says Breaker, it says plainly that you can believe in vain. And, of course, they'll say, well, that's the uh, resurrection. And they'll, they'll Totally take it away from the immediate context. It's talking about the gospel. Continue. But when they thought that salvation was by asking, they didn't know. They had no assurance of salvation. When you trust the blood atonement, you have assurance of salvation. So I believe this is a very important thing. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Because the push in modern Christianity is, well, just get a person to, to repeat a prayer or just get a person to ask God to save them. Why isn't the focus on make sure the person trusts the blood of Christ? It's, it's not right. You can leave somebody lost unless you point them to Christ crucified in the blood of Christ. And they need to understand it's by faith and trusting in what Jesus did that saves us, not just because we ask. So Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed God. You are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you must trust in something to be saved. You must believe in something. If all you've ever done is said, oh, God, save me, but you've never trusted in the gospel, then you don't even have the Holy Spirit. Stop. Okay. Uh, another point I want to make here. If you fall down and break your leg, uh, why do you call 911 in desperation? Uh, because you believe that they can help you. Okay. If you're crying out to God and saying, God, please save me, it's because you are believing. I mean, when you are fervently and you want, I mean, you look at the gospel and you understand the gospel, you are calling fervently out to the Lord saying, God, please save me. And he keeps mocking that. Mm, yeah. Me off, you know, and, and you're calling out fervently to the Lord saying, God, please save me. You know, I mean, how about Breaker here lowering his pride and actually coming to the Lord as a sinner and saying, God, please save me. Give up your self-righteousness. Yeah, but you know, it's just intellect. That's all it is. Yeah, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So, yep, exactly. Continue. That's what this verse says. After you heard the gospel and believed it, trusted, that's when you were saved and you got the Holy Spirit. So, if all you've ever done is just said, "Oh God, save me," but you've never trusted in the gospel of salvation and you're not trusting in the blood atonement of Christ, then you've asked, but you've never trusted. So you're still lost and you need to come to Christ. You need to trust in the blood atonement of Christ. How are we saved today? Are we saved by asking or are we saved by believing? Well, the Bible says in Ephesians 1, uh, 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are saved by faith. Let me show you 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I get a chuckle all the time 
when people send me videos and say, Brother Breaker, there's another video on YouTube about you, and this guy's attacking you, and he says you preach another gospel. Hey, he says you preach another gospel. And I say, well, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard, because the gospel that I preach is the gospel that saves the gospel of Paul, and it's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, what the gospel is. How anybody can say and, and if you look there in verse two, it says, unless you have prayed in vain, okay? <laughs> remember that it's the mm -hmm. prayer. You can pray in vain. You know, it's all oh, no, it's uh, believed in vain. Yep. All right. Continue. Hey, Robert Breaker doesn't preach the gospel. It is ridiculous <laughs> because I'm going to read to you what the Bible says is the gospel. <laughs> in verse 15, 1 through 4, it says, moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel. Does it get any plainer than that? Here's the gospel. I declare to you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also you received, and where you stand. So this is the gospel that you must receive. How do you receive this gospel? By faith. It's through faith that we're saved. Faith is believing. It's trusting. If you ask God to save you without faith in what Jesus did for you, then you're still not saved. And there's a lot of people that are trusting in their asking, but they're not trusting in the atonement. Of <laughs> what Jesus Christ did was the atonement. And unless you trust in the atonement, you're still lost. So it is possible to ask God to save you and still be lost because when you ask God to save you, you haven't believed from the heart in the gospel. And mm -hmm. that, thing, but that is very common in the day we live today. Many people come to God and say, oh, God, please save me, please save me, please save me. And then they say, well, I don't feel any different. So they say, oh, please save me, please save me. And every night they say, oh, God, please save me. And kneel down by their bed and pray a prayer over, oh, please save me, dear Jesus. But you don't get saved till you hear the gospel. So what's missing? What do they need? They need a gospel. Yeah. Okay, brother. What? <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, when I got saved, I didn't feel anything wrong with that either. So don't even give me that crap. I mean, get yeah. to process sanctification. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be something that's just gonna be quick and easy. I mean, it takes a while for things to get kicked out of your life. The first thing for me to let go of was my worldly friends and my worldly life. That went right off the bat. I was done, you know, but a lot of things, it takes a long time to get cleaned up. I mean, it does. You're not just going to go in and just all of a sudden everything's just boom changed, you know, and I don't, I don't feel any different, you know? Yeah. You know, um, I actually get, uh, brings me to a, a story after I got saved. Um, cause the, the night that I got saved, I called on the name of the Lord and I knew the guy I'd known the gospel since I was a kid. I just never actually applied to myself and never, uh, dropped myself righteousness. And the night that I got sent to jail, that was the night I dropped my pride and self-righteousness and realized where I, I deserved to go. I deserved to burn. And I put my faith in the in the gospel. And then, you know, I didn't feel anything. But, you know, I started to uh, I was still messing around and stuff like that at first because I was brand new to everything. And then one night I went over to a friend's house. Well, friend, quote unquote, lost people. And they were partying and stuff like that. And I decided to uh, drink that night. And while we were drinking, one of my friends started talking about Jesus because I kind of mentioned that I called on the Lord and everything and that what I was going through. And he was like, you know, Jesus was a great reformer. He was an atheist. So he talks like they usually do. Uh, you know, Jesus was a great reformer. But, you know, he was walking around saying he was God. And, you know, I mean, he was just some crazy guy in a desert. And the moment he said that, something in me got so angry and just so I mean, I'll never forget that feeling. I wanted to jump across the seat and start wailing on him. Like, I, I literally, like, wanted to hit him over that. And it just, like, it broke my heart to hear him talk about the Lord like that. And this is when I was newly saved, didn't really know much at all. And then I went to bed that night because I kind of tried to argue evolution with him because, you know, I was brand new. I didn't know what the heck to really say to that. So then I woke up the next day. I just felt so grieved, like, so grieved that someone would talk about, about the Lord that way and everything. And that was actually around the time I started going on YouTube and researching things and kind of looking into evolution and then got into the rabbit hole of the whole, you know, Illuminati bit and all that stuff. And I started realizing, you know, that's what led me down the road to uh, a lot of conspiracy research. And then after that, I just dropped all my lost friends. I started reading the Bible and I was like, I don't want to be around people that want to blaspheme the Lord like this. And the Lord started changing my life at that point. So, yeah, you're not going to feel anything at first. I mean, I don't know what kind of point breakers trying to make. You know, but I, I know what I did. I called and I did believe the gospel and that's exactly how I got saved. I mean, you know, for him to make this weird splitting hairs, is just ridiculous. And, and also I want to make the point too, is that, 
you sitting there saying, well, you're, you got trust in the gospel. I got trust in the blood. Okay. Uh, what about grace through faith? What about grace? When does that come in? You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, repentance is our response to conviction. There's conviction of sin from God. Holy Spirit comes upon us and convicts us of our sins. Then we respond to God by repenting and turning to him. God responds to us by grace. Where's that at, Breaker? Big Chungus, whatever your name is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. Whatever. You can keep going, bro. All right. Full minister to come to them and read and preach to them the gospel so that they can believe it and be saved. Because we read in Ephesians 1.13 that you're not saved until you believe the gospel. And you can't believe it unless you've heard it. So it says, where do you stand? Verse 2, by which also you are saved. So the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15.1-10. I mean, it doesn't get more plainer than that. And the second here, I'm going to read what the gospel is. But it says you have to receive it. I before you accept that your seat. Excuse me. Receive it. You have to believe it, and you stand in it, because this is how we are saved. So the gospel is what saves us. Asking the... Uh, it, you stand in it? Uh, it might be a little bit of a, you know, keep believing there, or I don't know. You know, you got to keep that intellectual belief, you know, until you die and whatever. Because if you're an atheist and you believe for a little while and then later on you say, I'm no longer a Christian, well, I guess they're disqualified or something. <laughs> you know, got to keep the intellectual belief going there, I guess. We'll continue. Doesn't save you. Believing is what saves. We're saved by believing, not by asking. Did you know that when you ask somebody for something, that gives them automatically the ability to say yes or no? What if I, Robert Breaker, said to my viewers right now, I ask every one of you to send me $1 million. All right? How many $1 million am I going to get in the mail? Zero. Because I don't get it just because I ask. I ask you for something that you can't give me. Or what if I ask you for something and you say, well, I don't like you, Robert Breaker, so no, I'm not going to give it to you. You don't get something just because you asked for something. As a kid, I asked my dad, Daddy, can I have this? No. 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 Can I have this? Just because you ask for it doesn't mean you can. But when someone says, you can have this, it's a free gift here. If you believe me, take it as a free gift. Why well, then you can receive. What does the Bible say? Take it as a free gift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, because I remember I, I I made some sort of video about about that. I kind of addressed that. And I remember I got just just attacked like crazy because these guys, um, like turn salvation into some sort of like tangible object. Like they hang it down and say, "Here, okay, here, get it, here, get it," you know. And it's like, people, that's not how salvation works, you know. Mm -mm. Not at all, you know. And it's it's funny too because I've seen over the years with these salvation thieves. They'll always they keep parts of the gospel, but then they'll take parts out. You know, yeah. Hiles Anderson people they'll take out repentance. Uh, Faker Breaker and others like him will take out prayer. You know, they're always removing something from the gospel. So well, let's continue. So the Bible never says anywhere in the scriptures to ask God to save you. Now, really? like, I don't know that, so they don't want to go to hell. So they say, "Oh, God, save me." Now God, or no Brookman, and according to the Bible, now God must bring them the gospel so that they can believe and be saved. So what does the gospel? Well, verse 3 and 4 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. What is the gospel? It's how that Christ died. How did Jesus die? He died in a bloody manner. He shed his blood. So the gospel is all about the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Now, you might have seen this on YouTube, but there's a little feud going on, I guess you could say, with some other people that claim to be Bible believers, and they're out there making their videos against Robert Breaker and all but, Okay, Princess, why don't you just name names, okay? I guess yeah. I'm sick and tired of your chubby little face. And Oh, there are other people. There's a Be a man. Grow up. Okay, name names. Ruckman did, other Bible believers do, Paul did, Jesus did. My word. 
I mean, be a man for crying out loud. I get, I get so sick and tired of this. Other, there's other people on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Just, oh, my word. Really? All this and whatever, God bless them. I hope they get saved. If they're not, if they are, I hope they get right with God. I'm not important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God bless them. God bless them. <laughs> but the gospel is important. And whether they know it or not, what they're really attacking is the gospel of salvation. <laughs> and what are the of things? Yeah, yeah. And, and you're the only one that knows it, I guess, right, Breaker? Uh huh. You know? All these guys, you know, they're the only one that knows. They have the gospel figured out. Nobody else does. You know, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Not the blood. The blood's not important. You don't have to worry about the blood. The atonement doesn't save you. If you'll just ask God to save you, then you'll be saved. And I look at that and I scratch my head and I say, no, you obviously don't know your Bible. Ephesians right. 1, 13, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. We are saved when we believe. Um, and did you notice that he skipped over verse 2 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where yeah. it says, unless you have believed in vain? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Salvation is by trusting. If you ask God to save you without trusting in the blood atonement of Christ and what he's done, how can you be saved? God said, This is how you're saved when you believe this. Oh, really? God said it? Oh, yeah. he did? Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, no blood. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, no blood. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. That, that's why that video I made like a while back, they got they got him so triggered. I went through every single verse that mentioned blood, atonement, or sacrifice. I read one one verse that said you had to believe that to be saved. Yep. And I and again, again, all three of you saw, and those guys were just got so triggered. It's like I yeah. never denied the blood. I said you don't have to believe that to be saved. But yep. see, that was their that's the gospel they preach. And that video I uh, mirrored by UJT. It's actually the most disliked video on my channel. Oh, so, oh, same here. I, I, I have 18 likes and like a hundred something dislikes. <laughs> All right, we'll continue. Why would God say, nah, I was just kidding. If you just ask me, I'll save you. No, he set up salvation a certain way. And he said, it's when you believe that's when you're saved. So if a guy asked God to save them without believing the gospel, how could they be saved? It's not God's way. It's man's way. Let's go to uh, Romans 1.16 quickly. I've got so many verses here. I just want to get them out. But I want you to see that in this world in which we live today, a lot of people will tell you that the asking is what saves you. But the Bible teaches, no, it's the believing that saves you. So if you ask God to save you, I thought God saved you. Trust him in the gospel. Exactly. Exactly, brother. I was going to say that. Just yeah. make a point to, to Paul's there. Yeah, God's the one that saves you. Yeah. You know? Again, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead. You're gonna say something. Yeah. No, again, I say I, I did. I did another video about this thing to my channel. Again, it's it's like people. Yeah, because again, because one of the verses they they give me all the time, and I've been getting this one from these guys is they say Romans five one where it says we're justified by faith. So see, we're saved by faith. I'm saved by my faith. It's like, no, stupid. You you're saved by God. It's God's grace. You know, we're not uh, denying faith because I I had I I was showing Jeremy this. This um, I'll just say her name like Deborah Gill. She's running around saying that that she's running around saying that I say that that, that, that Romans five one through two saying 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 that I teach that that is work salvation. Like what on earth have I ever said that? You know you know, it's stupid. Yep, she's got mental problems. But then no. let's continue. <laughs> well, yet yeah. you're not saved yet. You need to get saved. And that's what this is all about. And so many emails have I received over the years. People saying, Brother Breaker, thank you for making that clear. I was trusting for many years and I asked it. And I had not heard the gospel or understood and believed it. And now I'm saved because I heard the gospel and understood that my faith is in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Romans 1.16 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that just asked God to save them. Is that what it says? No. It says to everyone that believe you see you've got to believe if you ask god to save you without believing anything you're still lost. Uh, i missed the blood in the passage there breaker <laughs> yeah yeah Joe, that never happens brother breaker oh yeah it does my personal testimony is this and i've given it before on youtube i went to southern baptist charismatic this that the other thing episcopal as a kid 
And all they ever said was, well, if you don't want to go to hell, just get down on your knees and say, oh, God, please save me. I did that every I never heard the Episcopalian saying stuff like that. Yeah. You don't think he'd lie, do you? <laughs> <laughs> he would never do that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You know, you know, you know apparently, honestly. you know, it's it's in every church's mission statement. You know, you got to get up and get down on your knees and just ask, ask God to save you. It's just right in the mission statement. Just look at their websites. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Single night of my life from age 13 to age 18. And I was lost as a gospel on high weeds. I had never heard the gospel. All I heard is just beg God for forgiveness. And so I did that all the time. It wasn't until I was 18 years old that I heard the gospel for the first time. And then I realized, that's it. That's it. That's all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. Jesus washed it white as snow. And I trusted in the blood of Christ for salvation. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.25 that we're supposed to trust the blood. So Romans 3.25 tells us what the object of our faith should be in. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ. When God said that. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying that because obviously this is one of the places where he tries to say this is a like this is the gospel. He has called Romans 3 and others, this is where the gospel is. It's like, okay, if that's the gospel, here's the thought. Where is the resurrection anywhere mentioned in that passage? You know, they just and that's just like one thing to point out. We could sit there and go again the whole blood thing, but again, give me the resurrection. Yeah. Funny how that works. Mm -hmm. Or to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. And I gotta say something else here, by the way, too, um, to anybody out there that's watching. Uh, one of the one of the biggest warning signs that you will ever see of a false prophet. They will not tell you to look in your Bible. Turn in your Bible. Yep. You're seeing it here with Breaker. You know, see, if you would have turned to your Bible earlier, if he would have said, turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and read along with me, you would have seen, unless you have believed in vain. See, but he just skips it and hopes that the people don't aren't looking actually in their Bible. Continue. Bible says in Romans 1 16 for it is the gospel of Christ that is the power of God and salvation you cannot get saved without the gospel so if you have asked God to save you at one point in your life and you've never heard the gospel and you're not trusting it then all you did was just ask God for forgiveness but you're still left lost it's when you first hear and understand and believe the gospel that you get saved that's why the preaching of the gospel is so important let's go to second Corinthians chapter 4 let me show you that now, I know some people will listen to this and say, oh, that breaker guy, he's such an idiot. Because all they've heard in many yeah. churches since they were little was just ask God to save you and repeat the sinner's prayer or ask Jesus in your heart. Well, okay. You know, th there's something so funny about this because I, I always, like, because I get accused of because, you know, because I call upon the name of the Lord. The funny thing about my testimony is that I had heard, you know, the gospel, how the Christ died for instance, all that stuff. I heard that when I was really young. Okay? Who hasn't, you know? But again, but like I just believed in vain. First of all, I was a young kid. First of all, but secondly, again, it, I didn't. Okay, I was like, okay, whatever, you know. But then later on, and later on in life, when I called upon the name of the Lord, you know, He saved me. The funny thing is, I never heard pray the prayer or, or Romans ten at all one time in my entire life. That's that's kind of the irony of all that, because you know, that's why it happened naturally. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I believed in my heart, and then. Then I had a broken contrary heart, and it came out of my mouth. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so I mean, that's why I see that this guy, and it, it honestly, like, it infuriates me to really a degree. It's just like, it's like you blockhead. It happens naturally, you know. Yeah. Like I said, you know, you fall down, you get hurt, you say, "Call nine one one." Yeah. You know, I need help. Don't call. <laughs> just believe nine one one. Yes, that's right. Yeah, sit there and smile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They'll be here any minute. <laughs> I can hear the sirens, so I don't think they're for me. <laughs> Didn't believe hard enough, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. All that is modernist, new age, new fangled gospel. That is not in the scripture. You cannot find <laughs> it in one verse of scripture anywhere that says, ask God to save you, ask Jesus in your heart. Or if you just repeat a prayer with your mouth. Okay, what about you know the publican and the Pharisee in yeah. Luke chapter eighteen? Mm -hmm. You know, where he says, God be merciful to me a sinner. I guess he didn't ask God to save me either, did he, Breaker? You know, I mean, yeah. I'm still waiting for you to make your 
point, you, you idiot. And you have not made one point at all about the scriptures. You have not taken anybody to any scripture to show us where it says, trust, no trust in your asking or, you know, you need to trust God without praying. I mean, sh show it to me. Stop blabbing yeah. your mouth. Show us. I'm still waiting. I yeah. Mean, it's you're clear. Yeah. All right, and you know, all the comments too. You quit posting scriptures about letting off bitterness and wrath and all that stuff. Oh. Okay. What we're doing is, is a harsh rebuke. All right. You say crap like that, I'm going to block you. I'm not playing around. You are a sissy pacifist Christian and you need to get saved. Okay. We are doing a harsh rebuke against a false prophet. False prophets are condemned according to Galatians 1 9. Read your Bible. Stop listening to wicked devils like this. This is no game. This is your soul. All right. I'm done. Go ahead. Mouth, well, then you'll get saved. It's not there. Over and over and over and over and over are scriptures that say believe. By faith. Trust. By faith. Believe. You see, what you do with your mouth just comes out of the mouth. But the Bible says believe is from the heart. And a lot of times you, there's people that claim to be soul winners and they'll go. I, I've already said a few times again, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You know, you can't separate the two. <laughs> yeah. It almost looks like he's got crucifixes on his um, tie. He does. He does. Yeah. No connection there. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you're going to see here in a little bit. I mean, he's he's building up his people here to get them to the point where he can deceive them on Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, which is the clearest scripture saying, to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You know, yeah. so he's, he's building this platform whereby he can just deny the plain English of Romans chapter 10. So we'll continue. Go to a house and say, hey, you can I can I tell you how to get to heaven? And the sinner says, yeah, man, my life is awful. And say, well, you want to get saved? Just repeat after me. Oh, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please send me. Amen. Oh, Jesus, so, yay, you're saved. Yay. And he walks away. And the guy's there going, oh, yeah. But they never preach the gospel. So all the person has done is with their mouth said something, but they're not believing in anything from the heart. The Bible says, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Salvation is a heart matter. It's believing in something from the heart. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we find out what it is you have to believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If a person claims to be a Christian, but they're not trusting in the gospel, are they even a Christian? No. And it says there, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The gospel must be preached. The gospel has to shine into the heart of the unbeliever. They have to see that they're in darkness and understand, I'm not saved by what I do. I'm not saved by my work. Okay. Uh, I'm not saved by what I do. Oh, what's believing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do, all you have to do is believe. I'm not saved by what I do. Yeah. Okay. Continue. First, I can't get to heaven because I ask God to save me. I must first hear the gospel and believe. Now, people say, well, you're against asking God to save you. It's a wonderful thing for someone to ask God to save them. That shows that they want to be saved. And that's a good thing. But the asking in and of itself is the same thing. But now, God's up in heaven saying, all right, let's cash in. This guy wants to be saved. Let's get him the gospel. Let's get him the gospel so that he does get saved. So if someone asks God to save them, that shows they want to be saved. Now, what do they need to do? They need to hear the gospel and be saved. Because it says here in the Bible that you're not saved until the gospel has been presented to you. And if you haven't heard the gospel, if it's been hidden from you, or for some reason or another no one's preached to you the gospel, you're still lost. That's what the Bible says. Let me show you what Jesus says, right? There's still people out there that want to argue with Robert Breaker and say, Robert Breaker, what? Hold on a second there. Hold on a second there, sissy princess. Okay, you're going to cheat what Jesus said, but you won't read Luke chapter 18. You yeah. won't read what Jesus Christ said out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaks. You won't read the part where Jesus said to ask and you'll receive. You know, I, I find it funny. You claim to be a dispensational believer. But you jump all the all over the Bible to prove your point. Yeah. 
You know, and, and so funny, Jeremy, like you just said, he, he, later on in the video, he's going to flat out contradict himself and then and then actually preach against the Gospels. He's going to sit there and go through verses like you just mentioned there and go to the Gospels and see, and, and, and literally his army is like, look, different dispensation. These guys can't really divide. It's like, you know, you? and there's right. certain things, you know, I'll say, yeah. like, you'll read the kingdom of heaven stuff, you know, say, okay, kingdom of heaven is obviously the physical earthly king on the earth. That's future prophecy that Jesus Christ is speaking about. That's, you know, that's not that's not us denying the words of Christ. That's just saying, okay, he's speaking to a future time and time period. It's not going on today, all right. But what about the what about the uh, you know words in John? You know, what about other verses of Scripture where Jesus is speaking presently? You know, if any man can sit not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is proud, knowing nothing. Yeah. Right here. You know, yeah. we don't deny the words of Jesus Christ. Okay. I want to get that point out. Okay. This man. No, I'm in favor of trusting Jesus for salvation. If you ask God to save you, then what are you doing? You're saying, please. Does God save people because they say please? If all you do is ask, but you haven't believed, how can you be saved? That's all I'm asking. Because asking doesn't save in and of itself. There must be belief in the gospel from the heart. So what I'm trying to do is make a point and show you something. That if you ask God to save you, but you never believe the gospel, then you're still lost. And that, that, How many times has this been repeated now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell a lie long enough, loud enough, often enough, and the people believe it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, broken record. That's what the Bible teaches. There must be an understanding before a person you get saved. Jesus says these words in Matthew 13, 15. All right, want to argue with Jesus? Do you? Matthew 13, 15. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their ears, eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Jesus says, look, these people, Israel, God's chosen people. Don't you think they ask God all the time, oh God, please forgive me my sins? Yeah. Or they say, no. And Jesus says, no, in order for them to be converted, they need to hear something first and then understand with their heart. That's the only way they can be converted is they first hear and understand. Um, and so, uh, I thought the law of God is written in our hearts. You know, what about that? What about that? What about the law that convicts us of our sins? You know, what about the conviction of sin breaker? Keep going, Brian. I'm sorry. Yep. I just had him say that. You know what? The Apostle Paul quotes this in Acts 28, 27. So it is still for the church age today. It's it's an exact quote. That's why I didn't turn you over to Acts 28, 27, because it's an exact quote of Matthew 13, 15. So according to Jesus and according to Paul, in order to be saved, you must first hear something preached and then understand it and then believe it. If all a person does is ask God to save them, but they've never heard the gospel and they don't understand about the blood of Christ and what Jesus did and how he's their substitute who died in their place for their sins, then are they saved? How can they be? Jesus and Paul said you can't be converted until you first hear and understand. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There's no conversion without the gospel being preached first and the sinner understanding that it's Jesus who paid for his sins. You see, there's a lot of people today that think they're saved because they ask God to save them. And if you look at their heart, what are they trusting in? They're trusting in their asking. They're not trusting in the atonement. You see, if you think you deserve heaven because you ask God to save you and you've never trusted in Jesus, how can he let you into heaven? You still are lost thinking you're saved by what you did. No, salvation is trusting in what Jesus did. So I want to make this clear. There are many today who say, no, no, asking is what saves you. If you just ask God to save you, then, then you're saved. But that's not what the Bible says. Okay, it's just, he's just lying over and over and over again. See, I, I, I decided to play this whole video just so people couldn't accuse us of, oh, well, you're, you, you only cut up his video. You just cut up his video. We're, we're going to watch the whole thing as hard as it is, and we have to endure to the end to be saved here. <laughs> but, but you know it just it keeps going over this thing it's the asking it's the asking it's the you know 
my word. None of us just ask God to save us without believing the gospel. Does really? Sense? You know, I mean, if, you're, if, you're even, if you're even asking to be saved from hell, the only book that I know of that teaches an eternal hell for sin is the Bible. And everybody knows Jesus is a part of the Bible. Everybody knows the gospel is a part of the Bible. So, yeah. I mean, I see people just saying, God, please save me from a hell that I don't believe in apart from the Bible. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and please save me. I'm not really sure how you're going to do it, but uh, just save me, I guess. I mean, nobody does that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Teaches. The Bible says you're saved when you first hear and then understand and then believe the gospel. Salvation is by believing. Do you know you can ask without faith? I could go up to uh, somebody and say, can I have a million dollars? I don't know that person. I don't know anything about them. And what are they going to tell me? No. <laughs> Just because I ask doesn't mean, mean I receive. But God Almighty in heaven died on the cross, and he went up to heaven, and he said, now whoever accepts me and trusts what I did for them, they have eternal life. And it takes faith to believe that. And when you believe it, you receive it, as we saw in the gospel. And you receive it by faith. You don't receive it because you asked. You receive it because you believe. So if a person asks and they don't trust, then they're not saved. Now, I've met many people that tell me, Brother Breaker, I asked God to save me. And I look at them and I, and I say, well, you know, that's great. But when did you get saved? Oh, well, when I heard the gospel the first time. And usually that was a year or two or a couple of weeks or a couple of months after. So they're not trusting in their asking. They're trusting in when they heard and understood and believed the gospel. That's when we get saved. No one trusts in their asking. We don't. We. What would you say? I said no one trusts in their asking anyway. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, like it's like, seriously. You know, I don't understand his mindset. I really don't. Well, I mean, I do. He's devil possessed, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. He has no arguments. He has just mixing out of thin air that like no one on the face of the earth believes, you know? No. All right. Misunderstand because of the apostasy. Many churches say, well, if you just ask God to save you, then you're saved. So we all go through that. We all go through this time in our life where we're like, oh, I don't want to go to hell. Please save me, God. That's when God then begins to prepare our heart and then he sends the gospel to us to believe. And for me, I remember 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, every single night getting down by my bed. Oh, God, I don't want to go to hell. Oh, God, please save me. Oh, God, I'm so tired and sick of this. I'm, I'm really impressed by the yelling and the high you know, voice here and everything. You know, just a little carnival preaching here to get the emotions stirred. These fakers are all the same. My word. <laughs> that guy's a carnival. Yeah. He's a clown. All the clowns aren't in the circus. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't until I was 18 years old that I heard the gospel for the very first time. Wow. My dad sat me down and said, son, can I show you what the Bible says? And he took me to the gospel, and it was like a light bulb went off of my head, and I realized, wow. Wow. All it took 18 years to, to hear the, finally hear the gospel? <laughs> what did you say, brother? It took 18 years to finally hear the gospel for the first time in your life? Like, yeah, his, his, dad, his dad was really busy, you know. Apparently. Oh yeah, <laughs> apparently. And uh, and it's funny too. Apparently, his dad's a preacher. It's like you went eighteen years and you, and, and you just now heard the gospel and oh, light bulb, you know. It all makes sense now. Every Friday, every night, save me, save me. It's like what? Well, yeah, uh, you know. I mean, I I I get so mad just thinking of that. Like. You stupid liar, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just ridiculous. The guys, is such a con artist. Yeah. All right, let's continue. I was thinking maybe I get to go to heaven because I begged and pleaded to God to take me there. But then my dad had taught me, and I understood, oh, when I believe is when I receive. The gospel, it's all about the gospel. Yeah. July 29, 1992, about 10 o'clock in the morning, sitting on the kitchen counter right in there. That's when I got saved, when I heard the gospel for the first time, and I understood. And I so it's not the asking that saved So it wasn't God that saved you? If yeah. You, believing it, you know? Hmm, interesting. So I want to say three things about this. I want you to get a hold of this. 
asking, or how do I say that? How do I say this in such a way where people will understand? Telling someone that you're saved just by asking, okay, that's the key. Just by asking is anti-biblical. <laughs> in the Bible, does it say, you'll just ask God to save you while he'll give you a salvation and eternal life? There's not one picture. Now, some will say, yeah, but Romans 10, 13. Oh, we're going to get to that. You know what Romans 10, 9? The word ask. Hey, pause it, pause it, pause it. <laughs> I don't I don't think all you guys could hear that, but he said if you, if you, right there, he just laid like a huge lie. He said call does not mean ask. And if you remember in the, early in the video, he started mentioning like dictionaries, how we define it. It's like, okay, if you read the 1820 dictionary, which he'll never dare show you because there's other areas where he starts giving definitions, he will never show the definition. I, I think it's like I think it's like definition like 13 under it. It literally says like to speak, to ask, you know, to request. That's literally the definition of ask, you know, or a call. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there, there, there's even a scripture like Acts here. I'll I'll, I'll turn to it real quick. You don't have to turn there. Acts 10, 18. It says and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. Ask is in the context of call. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. And he's yeah. setting his people up to to be ready for him to change the word, uh -huh. which we'll see later on. People read Romans 10, 13, say, whosoever shall call, well, the name of shall be saved. That means whosoever asks God to save, will be saved. Ask and call are two completely different words, and they don't have the same meaning. I can <laughs> Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. On the telephone and talk to you for hours without ever even asking you for anything. Oh, my gosh. The asking is... I'm buying something and, and, and say, can I have this? But just because you ask doesn't mean you'll get it. And God doesn't say in the Bible, anybody that asked me to say, well, I'll just say it. He says, no, when you believe and you trust by faith, that's when you receive. So people need to get a hold of that. And we're going to get to that here in a minute. But there uh -huh. is not one verse of scripture anywhere in the entire Bible that says salvation is by asking. Rather, it's by trusting in the atonement of Christ. All throughout the Old Testament, it says if a man sinned, well, he had to bring a sacrifice. He had to shed that blood. And so in the Old Testament, when a man sinned, he brought his sacrifice and he shed the blood. And he was trusting in that blood because the Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, it's the blood that maketh atonement for the sins. So salvation throughout the entire Bible is all about the blood, the shed blood. And you're trusting in the blood to be saved. What did Jesus Christ do? Why well, he shed his precious blood. Now, today, we don't shed the blood of animals to be saved. We trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 3, 25. So, is there one passage of scripture? Let's go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. And let's look for one verse, just one, that says, just ask God to save you. Do we find any? Well, on the animal part, shall be saved. We go to Acts chapter 16, and here's what we find. A man says, hey, what do I need to do to be saved? And the answer is not, well, if you'll just get down on your knees and ask God to save you, then you'll get saved. No, the answer is faith, trust. Acts 16, 30 says, and brought them out. Okay. He's about ready to read. It's like, hey, now everyone, notice it very carefully. It says it, um, it, it says the blood there, okay? It's there. Mm -hmm. It might not say it, but uh, it's there. No, it, <laughs> it's, it's implicit. Yes. <laughs> and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thine house. Salvation is not by asking, it's by believing. Let's go to another verse. Acts chapter. Okay. Uh, just, just another quick point. All these guys use all the time, they always stop at verse 31. Because, first of all, he didn't get saved right then and there, because verse 34 confirms that. Him and his whole family got saved afterwards. Because in verse 32, Paul said, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord. That's all that were in his house. And if you compare that to Romans 10, 8, which, 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 um, which Paul said, you know, like, like that is the word of faith which we preach. That I've shot, and it goes into it, you know. Uh -huh. you read that verse. You know, I wonder why. Yeah. Again, he doesn't tell people to turn there. Exactly. No. Yep. No. Mark of a false prophet every single time. 13, verse 38. As you read your Bible, you find 
that it says over and over and over that the way you receive the free gift, which is what salvation is, eternal life, a free gift, go to Romans chapter 5 for that, the way you receive that is when you believe. It's by faith. You believe, and that's when you receive, and you're standing in. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. The Apostle Paul says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, Jesus, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. What? When you believe, that's when you're justified? Wow, well, that's that's wonderful. So we're justified by Break blood. <laughs> we get forgiveness <laughs> by so we're forgiven based upon whether or not we have, by faith, trusted, received the atonement of Christ. And if we have, by faith, that's when we're saved. But if all you've done is said, please, Lord, save me, don't put me in hell, but you've never heard or trusted the gospel, are you saved yet? No. There's got to be a time in your life when you've heard and understood and then believed the gospel. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. There's not one passage of scripture in the entire Bible for us today in which it tells us, yeah, that whole belief thing, whatever, it doesn't matter if you believe or not, just ask God to save you and you'll go to heaven. No, it's all based upon whether or not you believe. And believe in what? The gospel. Ephesians 3.17, what does that say? That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Salvation is by faith. Galatians chapter 3. In verse 22, it doesn't say that Christ dwells in your heart when you ask him in your heart. Ask Jesus in your heart and he comes in. There's a lot of people that go around saying the gospel today is ask Jesus in your heart. If you don't want to go to hell, just say, oh, Jesus, come into my heart. The Bible says he does not come in unless there's faith. And he dwells in your heart by faith. He comes in when you're believing in what the Bible says you're supposed to believe in. And that's what it's all dependent upon and whether or not you believe the gospel. Galatians chapter 3 verse 22 says But the scripture hath concluded all under sin That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ Might be given to them that believe Verse 24 Therefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ That we might be justified by faith And then it says here in verse 26 For you are all the children of God by asking Jesus to save you Is that what it says? No By faith in Christ Jesus God set this thing up That you must believe And that salvation is through faith if a person asks God to save them, and the time they do that, they're not believing in the gospel, they never even heard the gospel, then they are not saved yet. The salvation comes, as we saw in Matthew 13, 15, when they hear and then understand and then believe. It, it, it still, it just baffles my mind. Why does he keep going over this thing of people asking without understanding the gospel? Why would you ask God to save you if you've never heard the gospel? Does he make any yeah. sense? Yeah. He's setting up a whole false argument here. Yep. It's all preparing people for what's coming here in a little bit. Like I've been saying, he's going to change the text of the King James Bible. Continue. And the salvation is through faith. When you believe, that's when you're saved. Now, let's look at another thing. These people that go around and tell you, well, just ask God to save you. They claim, some of them claim to be dispensationalists, but it's anti-dispensational. <sighs> This to teach that salvation is only by asking God to save you. There are people out there that will say, well, this breaker guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It does, it's not important, the blood of Christ. It's not important, the God. <laughs> and when a guy says, oh, okay, we're dealing with the lost guy. <laughs> the guys will blind to their eyes. They, they're in darkness. If they're against the gospel and the blood of <laughs> Yes, because thousands of people for you know for thousands of years have gotten the gospel wrong up until Robert Breaker. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah, really. You know, yeah. save your Hispanics. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, we're we're really fortunate to to be viewing him here. You know, we we know. Oh, to be saved. Yeah. You know, since yeah, since really. the, again since we've all called upon the Lord to be saved in a broken state, we're not saved. So all we have to do now is just no longer call upon the Lord to be saved. We just have to start intellectually believing that we're saved. Yep. Like, apparently, you know. No. <laughs> For Christ, obviously lost, okay? But these people say, oh, you don't have to know about the blood. You don't have to know about the gospel. Well, that's just stupid. 
No, if you just say, oh, God, <laughs> save me, then you're saying, okay, <laughs> just another gospel to me. Show me a scripture that says, oh, well, they say, well, we got lots of scripture. We'll take And every single time they try to show a scripture in which they want to prove that, they're twisting it out of context. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yep. So funny. It's exactly what lost people say. What's your interpretation? You're uh, taking it out of context. Ugh. All right. Go ahead. Chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thy mouth, Robert Breaker, you hear that? Thy mouth. <sighs> and shall be, and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession yep. is made unto salvation. Yep. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. oh, he, he, tries to, he, he tries to, to get around that here in a little bit. You aren't going to believe what he says. Oh, and what, one more thing, too, because because uh, he's going to go to the, you know, the, uh, the Gospels here. It's like, again, um, and it's called instruction and in righteousness. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for proof, for instruction and in righteousness, you know. You can use other passages to show salvation, even though even though some of them aren't you know are not you know you know directly referring to the salvation of the soul, you can still use them to lead someone to Christ. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah and, then, and go ahead, Tim. Sorry. Oh, I just you know because he he just put so much emphasis on uh, you know people twisting it out of context. It's like what you both what you were just saying, Jeremy, Romans ten nine, and you know the whole context of this is calling on the name of the Lord. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This whole stupid... You know, uh, calling doesn't mean asking. In this context, it absolutely does. I mean, that's what this whole thing is about. How can you, how can you be of an honest heart and go to this whole passage and try to say that, that people are twisting this when they talk about calling the Lord means asking for salvation? That's what this whole context is expressing. I mean, he's nuts. He's 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 crazy. He's devil <laughs> devil possessed. I mean, my word. Yep. Yeah. Right, continue. <laughs> The Bible is set up in dispensations. And according to the Bible, we are here in the church age. And Paul the Apostle says in Romans 11 uh, that we are uh, under his ministry and he's the Apostle to the Gentiles. So we have Romans 3 through 5, even, which are the epistles of Paul. And that doesn't mean we can't read the rest of the Bible. We can and we should. But as we read the rest of the Bible, we need to realize what dispensation we're in. Did you know that Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are still all in the Old Testament until Jesus actually dies. When does the New Testament start? Well, the Bible says this Testament starts with the death of a testator. So the New Testament does not actually start until Jesus shed his blood. That's how important the blood is. So everything you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before Jesus dies is really still in the Old Testament. And what these people do to preach their perverted gospel in which they say the asking saves rather than believing. No, the true gospel is you're saved when you believe. If you, all you've done it is ask, but you haven't believed, you're still lost. But these people that preach that the asking saves you, they always go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's where they try to get it. Isn't that what you just did there, numb nuts? Yeah, exactly. You just did that a little bit ago. That's uh, that's. Yeah. yeah. My word. Yeah. Let's continue. Got to get through this. Salvation. Now, I was hoping to read all this. I just don't have time. Oh, sure. Verse 11 through 4. When you get time, read Luke 18, 11 through 14. And here is a guy who does what people call the sinner's prayer. And this is the text that people use to say, this is the sinner's prayer. And here's a publican. And he goes and he says, oh, God, be merciful to me, sinner. Amen. And they say, see, and the Bible says he was justified. Yeah, sure does. You know, it's kind of funny, too. He um, he very carefully does not want to say verse 9 and 10. Because verse 9 says, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, you know, you know, yep. that, they, that they were righteous and despised others. Gee, who does that sound like, you know? 
all, all this time, all this time. See, you're saved by you're, you're saved by when you believe. See, it's when you have. It's all about you, you. You're know saying you're self righteous. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. Could that take place? I before the blood of Thomas of Christ. So <laughs> a different dispensation, still the Old Testament. And Jesus Christ was standing right there looking at him. Why didn't he come to Jesus for salvation? It's called a parable, numbnut. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a parable. He wasn't standing right there. <laughs> That, 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 that's what I'm saying. Verse nine. He didn't want to read that because it said it's a parable. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really. Big chunkus. Yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> stop naming that, okay? There's a certain preacher on YouTube that doesn't want to tell you the context. We won't name who he is. But his alias is Big Chunkus. I, I I care about him. I I hope that yeah yeah whatever. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's pray for him. For New Testament salvation. Yeah. That was still before Jesus died. There's another example. Matthew chapter 14. Yeah, I'm going to read this one real quick. Matthew chapter 14. I've heard people take Matthew chapter 14 and try to say, now this is for salvation today. And you go, really? And what they do is they preach. You're saved when you ask God to save you. It doesn't matter if you believe. No, no, you're saved when you believe. It does matter if you believe or not. But in Matthew chapter 14, here we have the Apostle Peter. Look what he says. Apostle Peter, they try to go to this. Where is this? Old Testament. Look what it says. 14, um, 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. That's what these people preach. They say, if you'll save the same thing, Lord, save me. Then God will save you right there on the spot. And they wow. go to a different dispensation and try to say that that's for today. And they don't read any further. If they would read further, they would find that what they just said was an outright lie. That we're not saved today by saying, Lord, save me. We're <laughs> saved by faith. And look at what Jesus does. He rebukes Peter for his lack of faith. Uh, I just got to say real quick, I've never heard anybody use that text. As a as a plan of salvation for today, yeah. I don't, I don't even know what he's talking about here. Whatever. Yeah, oh, and say, and and even if he did, it's still again instruction to righteousness. If you like, if you wanted to use that verse, right? Well, I don't know, but I'm just saying, if you wanted to, yeah. He stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, "O thou little faith, <laughs> wherefore didst thou doubt?" And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Jesus says, "Hey." All you did was ask me to save you. Why didn't you believe? All too often today, <laughs> preachers <laughs> preach nothing but Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They don't preach New Testament and the blood of Christ. And they say, just come to God and just say, oh, God, save me and he'll save you. And they'll use a passage like this. And this passage says, uh-uh, no, you got to have faith. So, and still, he wasn't even asking for the salvation of his soul. He was asking to be saved, uh, you know, physically from drowning. So that's not even, you can't even apply that to New Testament salvation today. Uh, we have another one, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Revelation 3 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Any man open that door, I will come unto him and sup with him and all this. And people today try to say, and what? that is speaking to the New what? Testament today. And so Jesus is knocking, you know, at your heart's door and he says, Let me in. Um, actually, no. That is not God talking to an individual saying, ask me into your heart. That is God speaking to the church of Laodicea, a church in which there's a whole lot of people in that church. And God says they're poor, blind, miserable, and naked. They're spiritually in darkness, and they're not even saved. And he's to a church, get out here and get saved because you're lost in there. See how people twist verses? It really it bothers me. Now, people twist verses to teach an anti-biblical doctrine. Yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> really? uh, yeah. Because they want so much to hold on to something that's not scriptural. Nowhere in the Bible does it say asking saves us. It says believing saves us. And what I see today is people. It says believing saves us. Yeah. Uh, chapter and verse, please. Okay, again, he just lied. 
It says, he says, nowhere in the Bible does it say asking saves us. It says that is a lie. Believing right. saves us. Where does it say that? Yeah. Oh, and, um, and um, by the way, um, there was a point um, I, I failed to mention a minute ago when he was going to Luke 18. I had to bring down my notes and I forgot to mention this. Again, he, again, he didn't want to read all of it. But how you know in verse fourteen of uh, you know Luke eight uh, Luke eighteen fourteen where it talks about how you know how you know how he humbled himself you know he didn't want to read that one because that does line up with you know today you know yep James four six okay going to the wrong extreme rather than putting all the emphasis on the belief and faith and trusting in the blood of Christ. They go to the opposite street, extreme and say, oh, just ask him. Just with your mouth say, oh, God, save me. Does it matter if you believe from your heart? No, the Bible says you must believe from the heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. It's another verse of scripture. And they say, well, see, Matthew 7, 7 and 8, why Jesus says ask. Okay, let's look at Matthew 7, 7 and 8. And they say, see, this is salvation. And Jesus is saying, if you'll just ask him, well, he'll give you salvation. Again, before Jesus died, not our dispensation. And look what it says. Are you talking to a lost person? Verse 7, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And they say, and so this is salvation. If you'll just ask God to save you, then he'll save you. And they will not read the very next verse. Verse 9, for what man is there of you whom... If his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? This is not a relationship of a sinner asking God the Father to save them. It's a relationship of a father and a son. And the son is saying, Father, can I have this, that, and the other thing? And it's still Old Testament, not New Testament. They are twisting the scriptures to preach another gospel. Who is the they? <laughs> what atonement in the gospel. Yeah. If they tell you just ask God to save you without trusting in the blood atonement, they're giving you another gospel. And it's sad. John chapter 6, verse 37. Well, let's go there real quick. John 6, 37. In John chapter 6, and verse 37, here's another verse. People say, Why well, John 6, 37, why well, this verse says you're saved just by asking God to save you. And you go, Nope. Nope. Once again, you're twisting a verse out of context. What does John chapter 6 and verse 37 say? John 6, 37 says, And all that the Father giveth me shall come unto me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So if you come to God and you say, I'm coming to you, oh God, please save me, I ask thee, amen, then God won't cast you out. He'll save you right there. Uh, why did they quote verse 35? 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me, uh, I'll never. Uh, uh, my believe it. <laughs> believe it. Chungus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you come to God by faith. Uh, you come to God believing. If all you do is come with your mouth and you ask, uh, please, 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 but you're not trusting in him from the heart, you're still uh, But a lot of people want you to think that asking is what saves, and that's not right. right. Luke 23, 42, right. the, uh, the thief on the cross. He saw Christ's blood, and he dies. This is a dispensation. Uh, uh, this is still before Christ died. And Jesus said, that day shall I be with thee in paradise. What did he do? He said, Lord, remember me when you will come into your kingdom. Not our dispensation. So a lot of people will run to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, here's here's another one. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 35 through 43. Read that sometime. This guy calls out to God twice. And he says, God, save me. God, help me. God. But he's not calling out for salvation. He's calling out for healing. He's saying, God, please heal me. Verse 41. What does Jesus Christ say? He says, look, you got to have faith. Verse 42. You see, the theme in the Bible is coming to God. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Again, he uh, he just lied there. He just blatantly lied because he didn't turn there. I, I have it pulled up right here. I'll read it. In verse in verse 41, again, you just heard him say that, you know, like you can't be saved because you don't have faith or you don't have, 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 have,
or I'm sorry, what will thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, receive thy sight. Thy faith had saved thee. And previously he was literally crying out to Jesus. That proves that proves that prayer, his calling, shows that he has faith. Yeah. yeah. And, and you can look at everybody in the Gospels that came to Jesus Christ in a broken state. They had some kind of problem, whatever the blindness, you know, the, the woman that had the 10-year blood issues or whatever. And then, of course, the uh, Canaanite woman. What did they all do? Did they come up to the Lord and just stood before him and just didn't say a word? They just believed nope. it? Yeah, exactly. Stupid. They asked God to help them. Yeah. They cried out then for help. Absolutely, yeah. But that's not a conversation, so, you know, we, we don't have to worry about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Through faith and believing and trusting in God. If all you do is come to God and say, oh, God, save me, but your faith is not in what Jesus did for you, you're still lost. I don't want to repeat myself, but it's important that you know. Feel yourself like 50 times. 52, blind Barmaeus calls out to Jesus. But the Bible says he was saved by faith, if you read the passage. Luke 11, 13, someone gets the Holy Spirit by asking for it. Who is that? Well, that's still in the Old Testament. That sounds like that's going to be over here in the tribulation. That's not the church age because we've already started this looking at Ephesians 1.13. In Ephesians 1.13, Paul says today in our dispensation, we don't get the Holy Spirit just because we ask God for it. We get it when we believe. And when we believe the gospel, that's when we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So if someone is preaching, all you have to do is ask God for the Holy Spirit, ask God to save you, ask Jesus in your heart. They are preaching a non-dispensational, uh, or how would I say this the best way? They are preaching a a, a non-dispensational message. They're not in the right dispensation. They're not here preaching the, the, the gospel of Paul. They're over here, or they're over here. They need to get right with God. Especially if they claim to be a Bible believer, a King James Bible believer, and a dispensationalist. Why are they preaching a different gospel? The other thing I want to say is this. Well, I'll, I'll write up number three here in a second, but let me finish with one more. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. They say, now this one is in our dispensation. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, look what it says. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Notice the mocking tone there. I know, that mocking, like while he's reading scripture, mocking yeah. stuff. Yeah, he's a devil. Yeah. He really is. And the people that follow him and, and uh, refuse to stop listening, they're devils as well. Yeah. Simple. And they say, so if your mouth, if you just say, oh, God, save me, that you're saved because you asked. And they say that the salvation is because of what you did. You're asking. Why don't they ever read the very next verse? Oh, boy. How then shall you call on him and whom they have not believed? Mm -hmm. If you're going to ask God to save you, but you're not believing, then you're still lost. You've got to believe. <laughs> but it, what are we up to now? What, 112, 113 maybe times that he said this? Yeah. yeah, you got to ask if you don't get saved if you're asking and not trusting. Yeah, moron. Yeah, your faith has to be in something. You've got to trust in something to be saved. It's not the asking that saves you; it's the belief. So if you ask without believing, you're still lost. You're not saved. It's all. Notice how it's always all about you, about him, what you've done. Like we've been saying earlier. Yeah. It's not about when does God save you. At what point does God say, okay, I'm going to save you now? You know? Let's continue. We'll get into Romans 10 here in a minute and look at more. The last thing I want to say about this, just telling someone to ask God to save you, it is anti-judicial. According to the Bible, there is a judge a great judge of all things. And that judge is God. And God has this thing set up kind of like a court. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, the Bible says this about God. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all. God is the judge of all. First Peter 4, 5 says that Jesus Christ is the judge of the quick and the dead. In 2 Timothy 4, 8, it calls Jesus Christ the righteous judge. So there is a court 
system here. I don't know if you're familiar with the court system in the world, and it's not really that good because there's corruption in today's courts, unfortunately. Why do you think the woman is standing out there, a statue of justice, and she's got a blindfold on and scales because justice is blind? But when God judges, he won't be blind. God sees all things. The eyes of the Lord in all places be holding the evil and the good, the Bible says. But someday God is going to judge. Yeah, Breaker. He's going to judge the evil and the good, just like with you monetizing your channel and taking money from wicked people. Yeah. You, know, you scam artist. Yeah. Or the Book of Enoch. You know, how about that one? You know. Yeah. 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 What about the Apocrypha with uh, the scriptures? Oh, that's not even the kicker. What about him saying Jesus Christ is a liar by saying we can know the day and the hour? I heard that one the other day. Yeah. yeah that one about me fall on the floor. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and brethren, I, I actually have a clip because I'm currently working on a, compile, a, a compilation video showing all the times this guy lies. He has a video out there, and I'm not even joking. He has a video where he actually point blank says Paul the Apostle was a date setter. But in, in that same video, he says he's not. He's like, he's like, he, he's like, he, he's like, I'm not a date setter. Never have, never will be. And then he goes on to say he, Paul and the rest of the apostles actually date set it. I am not even kidding. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Kind of a good picture to freeze on there. <laughs> Chungus. <Yeah. laughs> Give me my KFC. <laughs> Based upon one thing. Romans <laughs> Look at what Romans 2.16 says. Romans 2.16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Paul's gospel is the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And Paul says, someday Jesus will judge all people based upon what? To see if they trust in the gospel. <laughs> now, that out there. You probably met him. I hear from people all the time, phone calls, emails, letters, Saying, Brother Breaker, the church that I go to, they never preach the gospel. Matter of fact, they don't even preach Paul. They say Paul, Paul shouldn't be in the Bible. All they do is spend their time in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I go up to them and I say, what's the gospel? How do I get saved? They say, well, just ask God to save you and you'll go to heaven. And I say, yeah, but what about the gospel? What gospel? Many of them don't even know that 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is in the Bible. And I hear from these people all the time. And some of them sure. tell me that the, the preacher even stands up and says things like, you don't even have to know the gospel to be saved. All you need to know is you're a sinner and then just say, oh, God, save me. I just, I got to call it. I believe he's flat out lying. I've never heard that, not not ever, in any kind of church. None of that. They only preach out the gospels and they say, just ask God to save you. That sounds like a flat out lie. I do not see how that can be, be a real thing at all. I mean, I think he's just made. I think a lot of these things he's just made up just to clear, just to make this video to try to argue a, a false point. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, I've been to some really wicked modern churches. They all believe that Jesus died on the cross and he paid yeah. for your sins and the whole deal. What they don't preach is they don't preach repentance. They don't preach yeah. the end of your self righteousness and that your life is going to change. They don't. They don't preach that. They don't preach against sin. You know. Exactly. But every single one of them. You go past the most wicked Methodist churches out there, you'll see the wooden cross out with a little purple sash on it at Easter yeah. time. Yeah. Give me sure your and if you'll ask God to save you, why well, you'll go to heaven because you asked. So they're making the, the gospel asking. When the Bible says no, the gospel of salvation is based upon the atonement, and it's whether or not you believe. So all over America, all over the world, there are false denominations that are preaching a another gospel. And they're saying that what saves you is the fact that you ask. Proof? Why aren't they focusing in on believing? Because the Bible says God's going to judge everybody one day. Romans 2.16. Okay, and again, I got to just say this. Uh, why don't the churches focus in on believing? They do. <laughs> Every single modern church out there tells you to believe the gospel. Tells you yeah. to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. They all tell you to believe. I mean, give me a break. You, you know, know it's fine too. If if, it, if his if their plan of salvation is right, if it just believe, okay, then who is it saved? You know, at that rate. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
not to see if they ask God to save them, but whether or not they <laughs> believe. It's all based upon whether or not you believe this gospel. Do you believe 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4? Are you trusting in what Jesus did to get you to heaven? Or are you trusting in what you did? I told you my testimony, I was lost for many years. I asked God to save me every night over and over and over. And I thought I deserved heaven because I asked. If I would have done it, and I was 18 years of praying every single night. <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Is this so pathetic? It took 18 years for him to finally get like this general knowledge of just his death on the cross? I mean, come on. Really? I mean, that's a world record somewhere. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, you know, uh, Martin Richling repackaged, you know. Yeah. Prayers will work. You can't get saved by your prayer, you know, and all this stuff. And I, I read the Bible eight hours a day, 365 days a year, you know. It, it just give me a break. It, he's yeah. just so righteous, you know. Every night he's praying and everything. Yeah. Okay. For the record, too, I mean, nobody here believes that we deserve heaven. We all believe we deserve hell. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yep. stupid. <laughs> we'll continue. You deserve a place in heaven because I asked you. Uh, and what would Jesus have said? Well, I told Paul that it's whether or not you believe the gospel. Why didn't you believe the gospel? What excuse would I have had? None. Because I hadn't heard the gospel until I was 18 years old. Now when I die and stand eyeball to eyeball with Jesus, and he says, why should I let you in heaven? I'm going to say, God, because I trust the Lord. So not what I do, not what I said, not what I... It's like, again, it's all about what you did because I trusted the blood. You're self-righteous. You just admitted to it. No, you get to heaven because of what Jesus Christ did for you because he saved you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. You just have right. to be self-righteous. I sure did, you know? It's basically you're forcing salvation on God. Oh, I believe, Lord. Now you have to save me. You're a force to save me. Yeah, ex exactly. Because it, it, it's so fun. These guys, they always run to Romans, uh, Romans 5, and they always say, see, salvation is a free gift, and you just take it. Okay, first of all, yes, receive does mean to take. The, but the question is, how do you take it? Okay? Did you take it because God gave it to you? You know? Or are you take it because you say, I have faith, so therefore I'm deserving. Give me. You know? There's a huge difference, you know? And also, the chapter and verse where it says God's going to ask us why do we deserve to be in heaven. You know, I thought we got to the seat of Christ at the rapture, at the catching away. Yeah. You know? Yep. Weird. We're, we're almost through this. I know it's suffering here, but, you know. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I prayed, not what I did. Lord, I'm trusting completely, solely, only by faith. And what you did for me because I can't save myself. And I'm trusting in what you did to save me. Someday God's going to ask me, did you believe the gospel? I'll say, you bet. July 29, 1992. So are you saying <laughs> God will judge all that one person, Scripture. whether or not they trusted the gospel of Paul? Whether or not they've received the atonement by faith. You know, this is a good verse in Romans chapter 5. Romans 5, 11 says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. You have to receive the atonement by faith. You don't get saved just because you ask God to save you. It's when you hear and understand and believe the gospel that you get saved. So I'm worried about people that have asked God to save them without trusting in God to do so. And you might say, well, there's nobody I know like that. Oh, no, there's hundreds, there's thousands, there's millions of people that are in false churches that are told that the asking saves, so just ask God to save you. Where are they? So it's for those people that I preach this. I want you to. Really? Where are they? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, proof. I mean, show me the proof that these people are doing this. You know, even well, back when I was. Uh, uh, SDA church. I grew up at SDA. I think a lot of you know that, Seventh-day Adventist. And we always believed in Jesus Christ died for our sins. Okay? It was always preached almost every week. You know? And every church I've been to since then, whether it be Church of Christ, even though they're water dogs, they still believe Jesus Christ died for their sins. Okay? 
Um, they just said you had to be baptized into his death, basically through water baptism. That's that's their that's their twisting of it. And then of course uh, the Baptist churches I've been to and the Pentecostal churches I've been to. I mean, I bounced around it a lot just because I was trying to find my niche, I guess you could say. But every one of them believed that Jesus Christ died for sins. I don't know where he's getting this. At. I mean, I know where it's coming from. It's a warped little demented mind he has, but. I just, I know I've never heard that argument before. It's just, it's crazy that he just it's a lot like that. Yeah, it is a lot. The only, the, the actual plague of apostasy today is the whole easy believism versus lordship salvation, that those two extremes. That's what's perverting the gospel and stuff. And now, of course, Breaker with what he's doing, which is basically easy believism. You're not going to see this stuff in any church that, oh, the, ask God to save you and that's it, you're saved. I mean, you don't see that. It's not there. Nope. To hear it, I want you to get saved. And if you're preaching the false gospel, I want you to get the right gospel. Salvation, salvation is a judicial thing. I got to say this too here. If you're preaching a false gospel, I want you to get the right, right gospel. Where does the Bible say that? Okay. If a man's preaching a false gospel, he's accursed. Mm -hmm. You're not going to say, well, I, I was preaching the false gospel there for years and damning people to hell, but I preach the right one now. <laughs> Think about this for a minute. You commit a crime and you go before a judge. All right. Picture this. You got this big old bench here. You're standing there, and that judge is sitting up there behind his bench. He's got a little gavel here, you know, a little gavel. And the judge says, Okay, what are you here for? And you say, Well, judge, I, I'm a sinner. And the judge says, Well, all sinners must go to. And you say, no, 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 no. I, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't want that. And the, and the judge says, well, have you, have you made, is there a payment for your sin? The only way to not go to jail is to make a deal, make a bargain, if you will, with the judge. And if you look at this in a judicial way, what happens if you come to the judge and say, Judge, I'm just as guilty as hell. Please let me go. Do you think a judge will go, well, all right, you look like a half decent fellow. Because you asked me to let you go, well, I'm just going to let you go because you asked. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that would be a corrupt court. A judge of the law must obey the law, and the law says there must be a penalty. Someone has to pay for that crime. If all you've done is said, well, just judge, please. Imagine you go before the judge and you're guilty as hell and you say, judge, please, can I go and not go to jail? Please. You think the judge is going to let you off because you said please? No judge worth their salt, who is a true, just judge, would say, well, just because you asked, all right, you're forgiven of all your crimes. It's not asking in a court setup that gets you off. There's a penalty, that penalty must be paid. So until that penalty is paid, you are still guilty. You must come to an agreement to have that sin paid. You can either pay it by yourself or you can take the deal. He just paid for our sins on the cross. And God offers you a deal. Pay for your own sins. Go to jail for the rest of your life. Go to hell and pay for your sins as you burn and suffer the wrath of God for all eternity. Or make a deal with the judge. And the judge says, well, you know what? Uh, you might not know this, but many years ago, we, we, uh, we made a deal. Someone paid for this crime. And anybody that will uh, make a plea before the court and say, I accept what's been done on my behalf. Oh, uh, I say I accept. Well, that would be calling, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Problem. Well, why not just stand there and look at the judges? Uh, what are you doing? I'm believing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trusting. You're going to scare me. <laughs> such an idiot, my word. Well, they'll be let off. The penalty's already been paid. Will you accept that? 
You must pay for your crime or have a settlement agreement between the two parties accepted by both to be let off. You know, justified is a court word. Let's say I have to kill a guy, and I hope I never do. You know, in the law, if a guy breaks into my house and he comes in, he says, I'm going to kill you and your wife, but I hate you. I'm going to kill you. And I'm scared to death, and he's coming at me with a knife, and I shoot the guy. You know what I am in the eyes of the law? Justified. That would be a justified killing because it was in self-defense. Justified is a judicial term. And there are times when in the eyes of the law, even though you're guilty as hell, you're justified. Justified means just if I never say it. And so when a man is justified by a court of law, in the eyes of the court, it's like, no, he never did that. We, we completely forgive that crime as though it never happened. So what Jesus did, Jesus died on the cross, and he paid for my kids. And then he went up to heaven, and he went to God the Father, and he said, now look, whoever comes through and accepts what I did, the penalty being paid on their behalf, then, I, then they're just and they're forgiven. And see, this is, it's not asking. You don't go to God and say, please forgive me. You don't go to a court and go to the judge and say, judge, I killed 20 people. I'm so sorry. Boo, hoo, hoo. Please forgive me. The judge says, no, you got to go to jail. But in salvation, the penalty has been paid. And I'm not saying by asking him to forgive me. He already did everything necessary to forgive me. I've got to take the plea deal. I've got to accept the deal made so that I can. I just want to make one kind of observation, his whole analogy here, because like, like, like you said er, earlier, um, you know, I'm God being the judge, which is true. It's like, OK, if you're if you're at the judgment, you know, seat of Christ or I'm sorry, the, you know, the great my judgment, you know. Yeah. Uh, guess what? Yeah. You're calling. There's no point anymore. So there's because you're already lost. So his argument is like so stupid. Like you don't like you don't get to like to the judgment seat and say, oh, oh, save me now. Well, obviously not. I mean, again, who who uses that argument? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Be <laughs> just. Let's go to Romans ten thirteen again. Romans chapter ten and verse thirteen says, "For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." A lot of people say, "Well, that call means ask." No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. <laughs> People say call means ask. Not exactly. The <laughs> word call comes from the Greek word. Oh, here we go. Here oh, we the go. Greek word. <laughs> but, oh, the Greek word. Uh -oh. okay. All right, we got to stop the broadcast. I didn't realize he was going to pull out the Greek. Man, we just lost big time, okay? Yeah. He yeah. just he just beat us. All we got is King James Bibles, you know? Yeah. Let's continue. To the Greek. But I looked up this word in the Greek language just to see what the the concordance had at the definitions. One of the definitions okay. to, uh, to uh, call upon. But another definition was to appeal to. And I looked at that appeal to, and I said, hey, that's pretty good. Appeal. Oh, that's pretty good. That fits my life. <laughs> yeah, but does it mean to ask? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. When you appeal something, don't you ask to, you know, appeal it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to reverse it, yeah. I mean, how stupid, Breaker! You're a moron. Yeah, well, it's like I said earlier, like in the in the dictionary, it, like 1820, 1820 dictionary, it literally says the words to ask. Like you know, I'll get a copyright strike on my on my channel, and it'll ask me, "Do I want to appeal it?" You're basically sending in your information to reverse it by asking them to reverse it, you know, and asking, you know, telling you telling them why you think you it should be removed. You're asking. That's what appealing means. Yeah, you're such an idiot. <laughs> in America, and there's a thing called the appellate court. In appealing, you appeal to the court. What do you do when you appeal to a court? Well, I've got my Bible, and I'm reading through the book of Acts. And in Acts chapter, um, I know I wrote it down here someplace. Uh, Acts chapter 25, verse 11, and Acts 28, 19. Paul the apostle says he appealed to Caesar. You see, he was in a situation in which they wanted to kill him, and the only way to be safe was he said, I appeal to the Caesar's court. I will go before He said, I appeal? Hmm. There's that calling thing again. <laughs> I appeal to him. Did Paul ask Caesar to forgive him? 
No. He said, I appeal to him. I, I call out to him and say, look, I'm trusting in you to give me a fair deal. And he says, that's, that's how he was calling out. He was appealing to see. What is salvation? Is salvation just with your mouth saying, oh, God, save me? That doesn't work in the court system. If you're a guilty sinner and you come before a judge and you say, hey, judge, please forgive me, he can't. The penalty must be paid. If the judge offers you a deal and says, will you take it? And you say, yes, I will. Uh, that's how you get saved there in the courtroom. Okay. Same thing with the Lord. The Lord offers you a deal. It's called the gospel. Yep. You call upon him. Good night, people. It's not that difficult. There must be a settlement. So what is calling upon the name of the Lord? Well, it's not just saying, oh, God, save me, and then you're saved because you ask. The word call is not defined as ask. But the word call is a call upon the Lord. From the now let's go over here to Romans chapter 10, and I'll close with it. Romans chapter 10. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that I have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant, ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and not submitting themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, but the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Faith speaks to God. <laughs> when you trust in the gospel, it speaks to God from the heart. Your heart cries out to God when you understand the gospel and you believe. I get a chapter and verse that, please. Yeah. In the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Really? He doesn't. He doesn't say you know, his heart. What? I just say, where does the Bible say that the heart cries out to God? Exactly. Yeah. Well, he, he, he has a particular verse, and he, I don't I don't recall if he uses it in this video, but he uses it in all his other videos. You always run to what's it, uh, 2 Timothy 2.22, where it talks about, you know, calling out of like a pure heart. And you say, see, look, it's the heart that calls. It's like, you know, the purified heart means that you're saved because God purifies our hearts when we get saved, you know. That's all yeah. it's saying here. By the way, I'm holding the catechism because somebody asked. It's because I'm going to show you what the catechism says here in a minute. So. But yeah, I mean, um, just the level of extreme that he's going to in his whole little video to try to prove this, he's run into this whole heart thing, trying to twist it, you know, as we established earlier, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it, you know, yeah. it's like, it's just ridiculous. Yep. All right, let's go. Almost done. All you do with your mouth is say, oh, God, save me. But there's no faith in the heart. Then you're like a sinner. That's guilty as hell, standing before a judge, saying, Judge, I know the law says I need to go to jail, but would you please, please forgive me? Oh, come on, just please. You can ask the judge till you're blue in the face. He'll say no. The payment must be. So salvation is not asking God, please, please, God, save me. Salvation is saying, okay, what are my options? Well, there's someone that's made the payment for you. If you accept, if you believe in what they've done for you, you can be let off. And you say, I accept. I believe. I understand. I believe. And I accept by faith. The Bible says it's your faith which speaks to God. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend to heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? And look at verse 8. But what saith thee? The word is not even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The Bible, Romans chapter 10. The chapter that says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The context is... Faith from the heart. And it said mouth, too. From the heart. It said mouth, exactly. Yeah. There's two things. You can't get rid of those two, because why? When you say for the umpteenth time, I have a bunch of the heart, the mouth speaks. They're connected. You can't get rid of them. That calls out to God. That's what God is listening for. Whether or not you believe it in the gospel. And to him, that's a joyful saying. That's like, that's like, oh! <laughs> what that sound like? Here it is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I hear his heart's believing. <laughs> Any scripture? Of course not. Really? Yeah. So, like, does God hear when you have heartburn? You know? Yeah. Your, your heart kind of makes a noise there, I guess, too. And, you know, anyways. I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Romans chapter 10. 
because they're trusting in the gospel. But if all you've done is call with your mouth, you have to believe with the heart. You're still lost. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8, Jesus said, these people come not only with their lips, but their heart is far from them. The Bible teaches us that salvation is a heart thing. And there is something that you must believe in with all of your heart in order to be saved. It's not just asking from the mouth that saves you. It's when you believe from the heart. And you believe in the uh, atonement. You believe in the gospel. You believe in the blood. That's when you're saved. Now, I can continue here reading Romans chapter 10. Maybe I should. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. I that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart. There it is. If all you've done is with your mouth said something, but you haven't believed in the heart, you're not saved yet. Got it raised him from the dead. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Oh, you mean it's the belief that gets me saved and makes me right with God? Why? It's believing in the gospel, and that's when I get saved? And that's, oh, okay. So it's not just asking God to save me. I must believe. Finish the verse. Now, confession is made in the salvation. Yeah, when you're saved, you confess. Hey, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Why? Because I'm true. Yeah. I, it, no, 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 that's not what it says. It literally says unto. Like unto means like, it, it, it means what it says. Unto, it's not after. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Trusting in what Jesus did. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. So you believe, and the belief is what's calling out to God from the heart because it says the word of faith. Chapter and verse. Yeah. Yeah. We're almost yeah. done here. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. One more thing, just very quickly. It, it, the verse says believe on. It believeth on, not believe in. You know, there's a big difference there. You know? Yeah. And the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this life. It's when you're believing right, that's what's calling on God. And that's when God hears and saves you. You can ask the judge till you're blue in the face. Please save me. Oh, God, I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. I ask you to save me. Please save me. If he's looking at the yeah, heart. You're burning hell, Breaker. Yeah, you know, really. I mean, I remember the night I got saved. I was just so broken. I was sobbing. And I was just, God, please save me. I'm so wretched. I'm so vile. I don't even deserve you, you know, dying on the cross to pay for my sins. I'm just so broken. And to see somebody making fun of that, yeah, you know, yeah, yep, just oh my word, just turns my stomach. Yeah, you know, oh, we should pray for him. Oh, let's just be concerned about him. No, I'm not going to pray for him. Yeah, he's gone past the point. He's preaching a false gospel. Yes, you know, I get sick and tired of these people coming in the comments and telling me that I'm hateful and stuff like this because I tell you not to pray for a false prophet. Where's the scripture that says pray for false prophets? Show it to me, and I'll change. You know? You know, when it says you know, love your enemies and, you know, pray for them and all that, you know, we're talking about Catholics. We're talking about Jews that reject Jesus Christ. You know, I have a burden for those types of people, you know? Yeah. But people like this, they claim to be one of us, and you know, yeah. twist the gospel. No sympathy at all. No. Yeah. Burning the fires of hell. And same for his followers that still listen to him after all this. Yep. Yeah. What is the heart for you? What is the belief in what happened? Why are you saying this might be scary to some people, but it's what the Bible says. No, it doesn't. To just with your mouth say, Oh God, save me. That is foolish to teach that the mouth saves. And what you say with your mouth. <laughs> the Bible says, Oh my gosh. Uh, whatever. Whatever. We're almost done. <laughs> you are not saved until you hear and understand and believe in the gospel from the heart. Romans chapter 10, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. They have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. So that faith comes by hearing here by the word of God. The emphasis of the Bible is salvation from the heart. Salvation by faith, by believing from the heart. If all a sinner knows is that they're going to hell, they don't want to go to hell, so they say, oh, God, save me, that's a good start. 
Now God's in heaven going, okay, now let's get him the gospel because he wants to be saved. But the asking itself didn't save him. Now, what are we that are preachers supposed to be doing? It's up to us to get them the gospel so they can get saved by believing. And if you claim, let me get right in this camera, if you claim to be a king James Bible believer, and you claim to be a minister of the gospel, why aren't you pointing them to the blood of Christ? Why aren't because you saying the gospel of salvation? They might have just said something with the mouth, but they're still lost because they haven't believed from the heart. Aren't you supposed to be, as Paul says, an able minister of the gospel and explaining the gospel in such a way that they'll understand? Why aren't you doing that? Many well, people are out there in churches and on YouTube and other places. They don't care about the trusting part. They just want people say something with the mouth. Name one. Yeah. Okay. Fairy princess, name one. Well, I care about whether or not a person is believed from the heart. That's why I make a big deal about this, and I want people to see it's not just asking that saves. The court, the court will give you forgiveness just because you ask them to forgive your crime. The penalty must be paid. The penalty has been paid through the blood of Christ. And when you trust that shed blood, cries out to God from the heart, and he says, that's right. They believe. Now they're saved. God is looking at your heart. Are you saved? I hope this has been a good message. I hope it's been a blessing. I don't want to. It hasn't. Yeah. Preaching uh, what the Bible says. And I just want people to get saved. And it's been a blessing to me throughout my years of ministry. Whenever I preach a message like this, hearing from other people that said, Brother Brecker, that helped me get saved. Or I sent this video to somebody else and they got saved and they understood because they were one of those that all they did was with the mouth ask God for salvation. They have never believed from the heart. So that's what I want to see is that you're believing in something. God bless you. We'll see you back next week. You know what? I guess uh, Rick Warren and Rob Bell are both saved because they believe the same crap. I mean, yeah. you listen to Rob Bell's statement. I've, I've looked at that guy when I did my video on him not too long ago. And he basically would say, Jesus, I believe in you and I receive you. Yep. And that's it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Um. But I want to show you guys something here in the catechism, uh, what they say about salvation, you know, the profession of faith. Check this out. It says the profession of faith, part one, section one, I believe, we believe. We begin our profession of faith by saying, I believe. Doesn't that sound familiar? No. Or we believe. But for expounding the church faith as confessed in the creed, celebrated in the liturgy, it lived in observance of God's commandments and in prayer. We must first ask to believe what believe means. Faith is man's response to God who reveals himself and gives himself to man. Almost like, you know, these people just taking the gospel. At the same time, bringing man a super abundant light as he searches for the ultimate meaning of his life. Thus, we shall consider for that search. Then the divine revelation by which God comes to meet man. And finally, finally, the response of faith. You know, no repentance. Yep. You know? Exactly. So yep. he's preaching exactly what Roman Catholics believe. Surprise, surprise. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised either. You know, if you actually understand the uh, uh, the Eucharist, you know, the Mass, um, they believe that you eat and drink by faith. You know, eating mm -hmm. and drinking represents faith, and they believe in the blood atonement in Christian. So they're eat, they're drinking the blood and saying, "I believe in your blood to save me," and drinking it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'll be right back. I got to go to the bathroom. No, you're good. I'm not, I'm not gonna be puking. You know. Hope <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that was disgusting. Yeah. That was horrible. Uh, that yeah. was vexing to sit through. Uh, I don't know. I, I seriously yesterday because I watched it yesterday. I was taking notes. I, I twenty minutes in, I literally got a headache. I was like, uh. I watched. Oh. That. I watched half of it yesterday, and just his constant please, please. I just I had to stop it, and I picked up the rest of it today and finished it before we started this. Uh. I have, I'm sorry. Go ahead and go ahead, Jeremy. I was just gonna say this was more entertaining than anything. I mean, it was just. It, it, at first, it was making me mad, but now as it went on, I was like, this is kind of funny. This guy's just yeah, flat out. That's what he thought, too. 
because well, honestly, because I've seen because all these breaker people, they always try to they always try to like like educate me. It's like you know, I've watched him just as much or longer than some of the, some of their most devout followers. I used to watch some of the stuff when I was lost. Okay, I know what Breaker teaches. And yeah. It, yeah. And, 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 and his video is just a repeat of everything he's already said. As a matter of fact, again, I'm working on a, a compilation video showing all his dumb lies. He has a video where he was like, it, I'm like, it was like, uh, it was like his like tenth ever like official like sermon video, right? It's so, so it's it's going really old, like it's like just like very drab. He doesn't have his beard yet, and um, he he's going through like what it means to call upon the name of the Lord. And he and he does the whole it's the heart, it's just the heart, you know, all this sort of stuff, and then. He actually, at one point, actually, actually says that confession unto salvation. He actually called it a Catholic doctrine. Uh, I just read to you right there. It's not okay. Ex yeah. to you. So I want to show you that because I remember him saying that. So yeah, it said I believe, I believe in Jesus. Okay, Catholics do believe that. But him sit here and say confession unto salvation as a Catholic doctrine. Uh, I just read to you that it's not right here. What number was that? What was it now? What number was that in the catechism? Oh, it is page 28. Page 28? Yeah. I might put that in the book. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good. That's, that'd be a good one for you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I've heard him say that before. So if anybody's got any questions about that, I just read it to you. Yeah. That's not what they believe. So, I mean. Hey, I'll be right back, right? Okay. I guess all right. I should the bathroom break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I knew I knew Breaker was a fake back when I uh, watched one of his um, what was it? one of his sermons where he started referencing the Book of Enoch and how the Book of Enoch talks about a couple of a uh, couple of angels, quote unquote, um, uh, buried in I think the River Euphrates or somewhere around there. And he's like, "Isn't it interesting that the Book of Enoch says this?" And it's like, "Okay, what's your point? Are you saying that the Book of Enoch is canon?" Because if you are, you know that's going to label you right there as a full-on heretic. So, I mean, what's what's your point with that? <laughs> yeah. But when I first saw that he was a heretic is when he came out with a video about three years ago where it said the bloodless gospel. Um, yeah, he called it the bloodless gospel. And I was listening to this whole thing. This is the time when I thought he was okay. I didn't think he was that bad, you know, ignorantly. You know, a lot of things he was putting out was pretty good, you know, and stuff like that, I thought. And and then I heard that bloodless gospel video, and I just I looked at my wife at the time, and I was like, uh, "Does this sound weird to you?" And she was like, "Yeah, it does. I don't feel I don't feel right anymore." And we turned it off. And then lo and behold, he comes out and he's denying prayer later on, you know. Yeah. So, so that was when, that was the first time I saw that he was a he's got problems, you know. Just I just don't. Sit here and I don't know how you can sit here with a clear conscience and preach the word of God and still and take money from YouTube. That still boggles me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the big attack that his followers, they, they'll bring against me and they'll, they'll say, well, you know, you have PayPal. Um, and so PayPal takes a little bit of the money. Um, PayPal doesn't give me money. OK. The big difference there. You know, well, well, you have to pay, and so part of the money is going to pay, PayPal. Uh, yeah, I put gas in my vehicle, and the money goes to Arabs and things and enemies of this country. Um, I go to a bank, you know, and they take money too. How is that the same as monetizing a channel? Mm -hmm. I never understood that. Yeah. You're, getting paid, you're getting paid to preach, you know, God's word from secular lost people that hate God. Yeah. That's not the same thing. Yep. <laughs> you know, and the other thing, too, about his his subscriber base, which I bring up all the time. Look at any Bible believing Christian on YouTube. It's extremely rare to see a Bible believer get, you know, 100,000 subscribers. He's got, what, 240 some thousand or whatever else. I mean, shouldn't that be a red flag? Yeah. You know, you go look at, uh, you know, Chick Publications, Jason Cooley, uh, people like that. They have under 10,000 subscribers on both their channels, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I find yeah. that I find it interesting, but he's got two hundred thousand. Yeah, and then you look at the views too. That's another thing. You look at look at a channel like a popular channel that's two hundred plus thousand subscribers. Look at the views that they get per video. It's you know forty, fifty, sixty thousand views per video. 
You look at Breaker, he's getting a thousand, couple, maybe a couple thousand, you know, doesn't line up. If he has 240 yeah. some thousand subscribers, he should be getting tens of thousands of views each time, you know, and, yeah. and again, people say, oh, you're, you're jealous of him. I wouldn't want 240,000 subscribers, you know, if my life depended on, it. I mean, that'd be, yeah. that'd be a nightmare, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's good night, you know, and it, it's, and, and, go ahead. Go ahead. I just gonna say it's just hyper inflated subscribers anyway. They're not even real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which he admitted to. Yeah. Wow. You know, I, I saw a thing too, and I was showing Jeremy this the one time. His two videos on like on like a, what was it? Um, the whole the whole like rapture thing, like September twenty third. He has one in Spanish and one in English. The English one got like nine point something whatever, and the Spanish one got like four point something whatever. And I found an article online. I don't know how accurate. I don't have no idea how accurate this is, but it was on like Investopedia, and it, and it was in, it was in like what was it? Twenty thirteen. For every like a thousand views you get, if you're monetized, you're making somewhere in the ballpark of what was it like seven dollars or something like that. And like and like I did the math off of those two videos alone, he at least made like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Mm -hmm. he had to. It's like it's in, it just off those two. We haven't talked about any other video he, that he's just gone up there. I mean. I mean that that's ridiculous. And it's not from say people, you know. Yeah. Uh here's a, do you think Breaker has paid for views and subs? No, he's not getting paid for it. He's or no, he's not paying for them. He is getting paid for them. The more subscribers and more views you get, the higher number of income you get. Um, there's actually a tool you can actually go online and actually, you know, kind of do the math on that whole thing. It's somewhere in the ballpark about two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars a year if yeah. you if you get all the hours together. When do I think Robert Breaker will introduce the Eucharist? Well, that's <laughs> funny, but you know, unfortunately, I think uh, I think a lot of these guys actually are closet Catholics. I think that that's the thing. Um, I see a lot of these guys and it's, it's just kind of a, they kind of, you know, it's, it's like they kind of test the waters a little bit. They'll, they'll just kind of say something a little bit Catholic. And then when Bible believers come out and nail them, they'll, they'll draw back. Oh, that's not what I meant. I don't No, no. You know, uh, there's a lot of these guys that are infiltrators into the Bible believing movement. Oh yeah. They're just biding their time, waiting for the right moment to come out of the, the confessional as I've been saying for years. Uh, someone said Cooley applies the law to his content. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't at all. Don't try to false accuse somebody, okay? Uh, I've known the man. I was friends with him for a long time. Cooley was a saved man. He's just got problems. Some serious, serious problems. He's uh, got that whole church building mindset and stuff. I mean, you know, I consider him saved. He preaches the right gospel, all that stuff. Um, he stands hard against Roman Catholicism and Stephen Anderson, but the church building thing has really got him messed up. Uh, I'll just say that. He is a little bit on the legalistic side about things. So I will give you that. <sighs> Brian, have you ever noticed Luke 11, 13 about this topic? Um, Luke 11, 13. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Well, now see, Brother Brian, that's that when it says ask, it just means the heart, the particular beating of the heart. <laughs> yeah. You know? Ooh. Yeah, good point. God's good. listening for that heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, what on earth does that sound like? You know, the, the whole thing is, you know, uh, the, he goes to this elaborate length to basically set up an entirely false system that people are asking to be saved and not understanding what Jesus did on the cross. You know, there's there's no knowledge. They're just they're just saying, God, save me or whatever else. Um, 
you know, I will say I, I heard of that in one situation, and that was uh, Ben David Liu. He was a Jew back during World War II. He was taken into one of the death camps, and uh, he actually, you know, cried out to God to save him, not knowing anything about Jesus Christ. He was an Orthodox Jew, and, you know, the Lord eventually led him to salvation, but uh, he wasn't there was no knowledge there of the cross or anything else. And to say that people in church buildings are being told to ask God to save, save them. And, and they're not hearing the gospel. They're not hearing about Jesus dying on the cross. That is an absolute lie. I mean, just, I don't know. I don't, I just don't understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'll, I'll say this too, about my own testimony um, for years and years and years, I, I prayed a, salvation prayer when i was a little boy and they told me you know well you're saved and i wasn't continuing to pray from the time i was eight years old up until the time i was 26 when i got saved um i was believing that whole time that i was saved because of jesus dying on the cross if you had come to me back then and said are you saved i just said yeah i'm a christian you know well, why well jesus died on the cross i'd have repeated the whole thing the whole gospel he was buried he rose again i believed in that you know, I really, truly did, but I was never broken in that entire time. I was very self-righteous. I was living in all kinds of wicked sins and just doing the church thing as a cover for my sin. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I believed for many, many years and it was, and that belief was false. Okay. It wasn't until I came to the end of myself and called upon the name of the Lord to be saved and God saved me. Okay. And like, Brother Jeremy said earlier, you know, it was not just this thing of the next day I was just totally cleaned up and I just never sinned from then on or whatever else. That is not true. It took a long time, you know, for the Lord to sanctify my life and everything. So, uh, Husky 394 XP, what does closet Catholics mean? That means people that are just, they're hiding, you know, they're really Catholics behind closed doors in their, uh, in their profession of faith. Usually they're yoked up with the military or, you know, or something like that. Um, I mean, they claim to be Christian. They come out on YouTube and they claim to be Christians. But in reality, they, they're, they're followers of, they're followers of this right here. Okay. Instead of, uh, you know, your King James Bible. I don't know where, you know, your King James Bible. It's a little Cambridge. So that's a closet Catholic. You know, and their 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 doctrines will come out in their in their videos and stuff. Oh, uh, okay. I saw a question here. Laura Beth said, "What does confession mean? Um, in what context are you saying about you know as far as when I talk about Catholic confessional, or are you talking about as a Christian confessing things? Um, not really sure which way you're thinking on that one." I, mean, I can answer both questions, but I'm not sure specifically. Confession is made unto salvation. Um, okay, go back to Romans. <clears throat> Turn in your Bible to Romans. Chapter 10. All right, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Okay. You're confessing saying, you know, Lord Jesus. Or you can, you know, pray to him. Or you're saying, you know, I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. That he was buried. That he rose again. I believe that, you know, he can save me. I, you know, confessing. And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Belief is part of it. Again, we're not denying belief. Uh, thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so you're coming to god and you're saying god please save me i believe jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins i mean you know you can watch my salvation message on my channel and i go through just put up like a little model you know prayer that somebody could pray and it goes into that whole thing there that you're confessing i believe that jesus died on the cross and that he was buried and rose again and you know please save me um 
Uh, it's not a thing of you have to confess every sin that you've ever done or something like that. Uh, that's that's not it. So hopefully that answers your question. And I've got another question to um, Orion Trent question. Would you guys agree that deliberately preaching a false gospel is another form of taking God's name in vain? Basically uh, blaspheming God. Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Do you think Robert Breaker will become more pale with time? Well, that depends <laughs> on if he follows the gospel of Ed Fenninger. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ed's kind of leading the charge in, as far as paleness is concerned. Oh, yeah. He's kind of got that market cornered. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider James Patel a closet Catholic? Mm -hmm. I would. Yeah. No, yeah. Definitely with you on that. I was talking to Jerry about this actually earlier because Jeremy asked me this question. There's actually a video um, of Finninger where he was given his, you know, <clears throat> gospel. And um, and he's saying, he, he, he like, he's going through, like, mocking prayer and mocking repentance. And James actually, actually in the comments saying, amen, you know, exclamation mark, you know. I mean, honestly, I never really trust the guy anyway. I only watched him just kind of because I'd seen other people had recommended him. And I mean, and so I remember, I remember one time I I, wa I watched his like Hebrews commentary. I'm like, I'm like, my like, man, that was just lame. Cause there's just so much stuff in there. He was just like, that's just not true. I'm like, stuff is wrong here. Yeah. Um, James Mattel, if you listen to him as well, he, he, puts on a very, um, like kind of that staged voice. Let's turn in the Bible to the book of First yeah. Corinthians. Yeah. There's a, that's a thing I've preached against for years, this thing of carnival preaching. You know, you, you got to watch out for people that have a preaching voice. That That is so dangerous. You know, I just, I can't warn enough about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what it does, it, 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 it rises the flesh, basically. You know, it's a form of mind control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called, a, it's actually, um, a, a name for it is actually tonality. And um, I've said, you get a good example. This is John Hagee. John Hagee and his, uh, Israel will be restored to its right gl rightful glory and all this weird stuff and those high pitches and stuff like that. It appeals to the flesh. Hallelujah, tell the Lamb of God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can someone lose their salvation if they blaspheme against the Holy Ghost? Not today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blasphemy in the Holy Ghost is only possible when Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. Um, if you want to watch, we have actually have a podcast on Tim's channel on blaspheming the Holy Ghost, the unpardonable sin. Go check that out. Yeah. yeah answer all the Go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah. For if you uh, if you want to search my channel for those for that podcast, just um, go to YouTube and type in AVBTM all caps evangelist videos. That's uh, the channel where we host the, uh, the live streams and podcasts on topics like that. Okay, um, Daryl Miller here asks Brian Denlinger, can you please explain Romans chapter six verses three through five? Uh, turning your Bible to Romans chapter six verse three. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if, we've been, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Romans chapter 6 is all about the old man, your old life being crucified and buried with Jesus Christ. That's one of the things that happens when you get saved. It's another one of those things you aren't going to understand. It's not, you know, part of the gospel in terms of you have to understand that you're going to become a new creature. Um, but those things will be revealed to you later on. And, you know, when you get saved, the Lord says, OK, that old life is now dead. It's buried with Jesus Christ. Walk in newness of life. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus and you're going to sin. You're going to have struggles. You're going to you're going to have fighting with the flesh and everything else for a long time but the point is there is a new direction in life you definitely will see changes happening so um 
Is it okay for a Bible believing woman to have a job? Well, really, it depends. My thing is with that whole issue. Um, let me let me explain this. If a Bible believing woman gets saved and she's married to a dirtbag lost husband that um, you know doesn't provide, doesn't you know, you know, doesn't want anything to do with Jesus Christ, well, she has every right to leave him. Okay, you're not supposed to be yoked up together with unbelievers. And if they reject Jesus Christ, the only thing to do with it, she needs to leave. Okay, we're not in bondage in certain cases. So at that point, I would say, yeah, a woman can work at that point because I mean, where's she going to go? You know, I mean, she's supposed to leave, you know, and live for Christ. You know, you can't stay in an unequal marriage and live for Christ. It doesn't work. Okay, you're just going to be constantly living in hell trying to, you know, fight off your lost spouse. I've seen it so many times. So that would be one scenario. And, you know, if you're a single mother out there, you know, that doesn't have a husband, then yeah, you really don't have a choice to stay in age. So um, that'd be the f few areas I would say God would have some grace for, you know, but if you have a godly husband, you should be at home. Absolutely. So that's what I would say about that. Yeah. And then people try to take that when you say something like that and they'll take it and they'll say, you know, women will take it. And they'll say, well, then if it's okay in those cases, then I can have it in my case as well. They'll, this loopholing thing. That's one yeah, of the yeah. worst things that there is today. Loopholing Christians. Uh, well, if you're saying it's okay in this thing, then we'll just bring in all this other stuff and say it's okay in these other cases. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm not giving you, uh, you know, I'm not giving a woman and telling you it's okay to go. Uh, it's okay to go have a job. Okay. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are certain cases where you don't have a choice. Okay. So let me re let me re correct myself. Yep. You know, if you can at all possible, be at home. Okay. No. Yep. Hey, sixty-five dislikes. Come on, you you break her rights. You can do better than that. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Unsubscribe now. You know. <laughs> that unsubscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! And see, the opposite is going to happen. They're going to all subscribe to us and stalk every little thing we do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, 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 and like, and email us. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. And I will say this: I do apologize if we don't see everybody's comment. I mean, they're going really fast. I, I'm trying to keep up, but it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's quick. Uh, what does Colossians two eighteen and through nineteen mean? Well, let me turn there. Speaking of which, to all the uh, all the brother in the comments watching, if you uh, uh, a new format we can do for uh, questions and answers. If you have a question, type type in all caps the first word question or just a capital Q, and then your uh, your question after that, and that should make it more more seeable. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Okay. All right, Colossians 2, 18 through 19, it says, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered, knit together, increased with the increase of God. Well, verse 18 is talking about don't worship angels. That's clear as day. It's kind of funny because recently I got accused of that because I said the angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ. I mean... But uh, which I mean, he is. It's Jesus is the image of the invisible God. You know, if you don't believe Jesus Christ is the angel of the Lord, yeah, yeah, some problems there. But verse nineteen is talking about the body of Christ. It's saying, you know, Jesus Christ is the head, and of course, the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together, increase with the increase it with the increase of God. See, we increase with God, okay, because we're the body of Christ. That's what verse nineteen is talking about. So. Um, and basically, Paul is saying, don't let anybody beguile you in of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, you know, <laughs> intruding on, into those things which he had not seen, mainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Yeah, that's what they are, They're puffed up by their fleshly mind. You know, most of these people are. So. Okay, here's a comment. Ahab it says, is First Timothy 5 8 a salvation issue? What I mean is, if one doesn't provide for their household, they can't get saved. Until they do, or does it mean 
They're saved but not right with God. Um, saved but not right with God. You know, I would say if they're if they're it's not that they can't find work, it's that they're not working. Is what yeah. first five verse eight is about. And it ain't talking about, you know, uh ministers either that are in full time ministry like me and Brian. Yeah. I get that nonsense put on me all the time. You, know, you don't work, you don't provide, you need to go back to school and get some training. You know, get a life. If you tell me that, I'm just going to block you. Yep. You're right here. I got a comment. Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, authorized KJV says at JT does good videos recently, but I noticed one of Ed Finger followers actually left a comment on your video, a positive comment, but. SG, I'm not quite sure that is, has done videos on the Bible Godhead, the nice Trinity. Yeah, actually, that, that's a funny thing because I might, I, might, I did a study called the entitled um, a, a big study, it's like two hours long, about the glory of the Lord. And I actually had a, a Finger person come on there and actually admit because this person's like a, like a devout Finger, right? I've seen his comments all the time. He actually admitted it was actually a good study. He actually was like, "Wow, you, you actually admit that God showed me something." He said that. And I'm like. I'm like, well, hey, maybe you actually realize that the, the Trinity doctrine's false, you know? That I, actually, Ed ain't telling you the whole truth, you know? Um, okay, I, I see a question here. Um, Laura, Beth, do you guys really think the name calling is helpful? And uh, the fact of the matter is, is the Lord Jesus called people names. Paul called people names. Name calling is a part of Scripture. And when you get false prophets like this, it's more than appropriate to call them names, you know, in um, in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You got to remember, if you're getting offended by the name calling, you're, you know, you're a soldier and you have to endure hardness. You better get over that stuff. False prophets, they don't deserve your respect and they deserve to be name called and have their cages rattled because they're false. And, uh, you know, that's part of breaking through the little self-righteous ideas that they have in their minds. So, no, it's there's nothing wrong with name-calling whenever it comes to false prophets and devils that are twisting scripture like that. Um, here's a question. Where does in the Bible say we must repent after we are saved? Paul Kidder, a.k.a. Dot Kid, say he reads 250 times to must repent. The Bible doesn't, doesn't say that, okay? Uh, when you get saved, you're saved. That's it. Paul Kidd, I know all about this guy. He, uh, he is a, uh, you know, he's basically a, a, a sinless perfection idiot. You know, he's one of these people that says you must uh, call upon the name of the Lord, and then after that, you can't sin anymore. You know, and if you do, you must repent. And that's Roman Catholicism is what that is. Okay? Don't fall for any of that nonsense. Okay, you're saved once. Or you're not saved multiple times. Roman Catholics believe that you're saved multiple times. Okay? Paul Kidd is a work salvationist, and he should not be, uh, you know, taken seriously. Nowhere in the Bible does it say we must stay in, stay in a state of repentance to be saved. Nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cooper Slayer here says, question, how do you reconcile the fact that no man is justified by works? And the verses stating, he who believeth on the Son is saved with your doctrine of a necessary request to God to save you. Um, the, the whole point here is, you are requesting that God saves you. That's not a work. Okay. Um, if I'm saying to God, I believe in the gospel, can you please save me? That's not me working. Okay. <laughs> That's calling upon him to help me. All right. Oh, just to address something in the comments, again, authorized KGV, she, uh, this person said, uh, Renee Rowland is preaching the right doctrine, because someone said about, something about Renee Rowland. Uh, Renee Rowland does not preach the right doctrine. That woman is incredibly wicked. I might do a video about her in the future. I mean, she actually had, I mean, she has come on camera saying where she's admitted to doing all sorts of sins, and she literally goes, yeah, yeah, I know it's bad, I know it's wrong, but you know what, I'm just going to do it anyway. Yeah, and the fact that she's a woman, she has no business preaching, okay? Yeah. She actually, she actually calls herself an elder. Like she says, like she's like she. No, she's like no. I know, I know. I'm an elder, okay. So I can preach, okay. It's like, show uh, me some scripture. No. You know, I mean, show me some scripture where a woman's an elder. You know, like, don't take any woman seriously that doesn't have the authority of a man over them on YouTube, okay. Uh, you know, I get questions all the time about you know, you should go or you should go expose this woman here or this woman preacher here. No, I'm not. They're women. They're they're fake. They're false. Okay. 
Second Timothy two twelve says, "I shall not serve serve a woman to teach, nor or I shall not suffer a woman to teach, nor serve authority over a man, but to be in silence." Women have no business having their own ministry channel, not at all. I used to think it was okay, you know, to have a channel and just talk about the Bible. I don't believe that way anymore. Not really, you know, because there's some women out there that come along and they think they know the Bible and they just only been saved for a few months and they try to rebuke preachers like me and Brian. Just had that recently. Yep. As far as Ken Hoven is concerned, yeah, he's kind of um, major. They call themselves post trib pre wrath, is what they do. Um, the guy, um, Roland Rasmussen, was the one that came up with the whole. Th well, Roland Rasmussen and um, Rosenthal, Marvin Rosenthal, I think the guy's name was. And uh, yeah, Brian Harlow. Yeah, I have a three part series debunking Ken Hoven's book, you know, going through it page by page. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm just, my soul is so vexed right now from watching that Robert Breaker thing. I just can't get my thoughts quite right. And just, yeah. Oh, my yeah. oh yeah. That's why I, I, was I, I got a headache from watching it. It was just like so disgusting. Yeah. yeah. It was ridiculous. Uh, it's just the fact the way he was looking into the camera, like, you know, there was nothing there, you know? Yeah. Oh, so if you look into his eyes. If you look, there's there's literally nothing there. If you actually sit there and stare at him, you know. And it's funny about him. It's like you know, I, I'll say this too. For him to come out and say all the crap he has said, like again, I have a video for those who haven't seen it. This dude gets on camera and actually says, as is written in the book of Enoch and the book of Jude. You know, yeah, he said that. You know, like it's like for him to say that, he has to know his followers are so, you know, dumber than he is. You know, to say that. Yeah. Crap. Uh, well, that's why he so, does a little hooping delight thing a lot of times. He'll just go, huh, 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 yeah, while he's preaching. He, he's he's deceiving people. He knows he is. Yeah, making good um, money at it. Someone asked about Jonathan Clark. Jonathan Clark is a he's a drug addict. Let's just put it that way. Um, he's been busted multiple times for false prophecies and you know and all that stuff. I mean, the guy said he saw Michael the Archangel and he said he was told to say Hail Mary to be saved and all this junk. And Jonathan Clark's an idiot. No don't, don't take him seriously. Hey, we, okay, question here. What is Breaker hoping to get from his videos, please? Um he's he's hoping to damn people to hell first and foremost. Secondly, he's hoping to make money. That's just the way it is. Uh Question: If one has if one has been baptized into Catholicism at a young age, do they have to be baptized in Christianity? No, you just need to repent and believe the gospel. That's it. Um, just turn away from that. Turn turn away from your old life. Turn to God. That's all there is to it. You don't have to be baptized. Baptism today is not necessary. Uh, yeah, we'll pray for you, Peter. Definitely. You're sick and in the hospital. What what's what's going on? What's the reason you're what's the sickness? If you don't mind me asking. If it's personal, you don't have to say, but you know, what's what's the thing there? Yeah, it's never good. Thank you, Chris. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll pray for you. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, let's just let's just pray for him real quick here. Maybe okay. just yeah. Take a break here, just a minute. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I do pray for Brother Peter as he's in the hospital right now with a, a pancreas. There, it's um, just really do pray for your healing, Lord, and that you give him wisdom. And um, help him in this time to just continue to rely on you. And I just really do pray, Lord, that uh, you just would comfort him in this time. And I ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, question here. If the first resurrection consists of Old Testament saints, Todd saints and church age saints. When are we all crowned and rewarded exactly? Um, well, it's the first resurrection ends at the end of the millennial kingdom, but.
but that doesn't mean that we're not resurrected, you know, throughout time there. The first part of the resurrection there, the first fruits, is when Jesus came up from the dead and took the Old Testament saints up with him. Um, that part's done. So, you know, whatever rewards they get or whatever else, um, that's already finished for them. The, you know, the main harvest of the resurrection is going to be the body of Christ. And we're going to go up and I believe, I don't, I can't tell you exactly when, you know, judgment seat of Christ will go up, caught up in the air to meet the Lord, you know, in the clouds and we'll ever be with him there. Do we go right into the judgment seat of Christ there or whatever? Um, I think the 24 elders are crowned, um, obviously before the Antichrist shows up in Revelation chapter six. So it's probably some time period in there. But again, we're dealing with eternity here. You know, so it's kind of hard to say, but it's not that we're going to have to wait to the end of the millennial kingdom for the first resurrection to happen. No, it's just the first resurrection has multiple parts to it, and it ends at the end of the millennial kingdom. You guys should rebuke Craig from Bible Flop Box. We already did. We have a whole podcast dedicating him. Yeah. I felt all the way through it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we going through his videos is pretty much how we feel right now going through Breaker's video. Like, yeah. <laughs> you feel like you're, He's that AI guy or whatever, isn't he? Look, don't he look like yeah. a robot? Yeah, yeah, he's the, <laughs> yeah. He's the, uh, the anorexic terminator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Better than Big Chungus. Yeah. I got to look that up. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> it, it is so funny. You're going to die if you see it. Well, I sent you I sent you a picture through your email. So Okay. Well, I, I, if you want to, go to uh, just go to YouTube, type in Big Chungus Original. You'll, you'll yeah, see. you'll see the actual video clip. Mine's just a picture with some writing on it. <laughs> I'll check into it then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little 20 second clip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. I'm actually kind of tired after watching that. Yeah. I thought it's not real, too. Yeah. When he was just going over and over, you know, calling is not asking. I don't trust in your asking. You know, he just kept going over and over. I was laying my head back like this right here, and I was like, will you please just get to your point? I mean, yeah. Good like get it. Here. Gosh. Man, he sucks. I mean, I don't understand how you can take him seriously. I really don't. Yeah. It's the I'm charts. not gonna be nice to them either. It's the know? charts. People like the marker in the charts. <laughs> the charts you stole from Brother Ruckman. Yeah. Guys, what do you think of women? People people like women and missionaries. Well, if they have the authority of a man there, you know. I don't believe women should be going by themselves. That's very dangerous. No way. Ahab question what if they don't look for work I only ask because it says they're worse than an infidel denying the faith sorry for all the questions in these live streams no it's okay and that's that's what that's what brother Brian said when he answered it originally yeah I mean if they're not looking for work then I mean they're they're safe but definitely not right with God I mean there's work out there and if a man's not looking for it to provide for his home if he's not a full-time minister or anything like that then you know they're frankly lazy and Bible defines that as basically worse than an infidel. Um, King James Bible believer question Should you continue to minister to lost friends even if they reject the gospel and the Lord? I would, well, my thing is, you answer them just like a heretic once, twice, done. Okay, after the second time, don't bother with them anymore. Uh, pushy evangelism is not biblical. We're not here to go out and push the gospel on people and to shove it down their throats. Okay, you witnessed him once and twice, done. Okay, usually what I did with my family, I witnessed him once, and then I did again probably about a year later. Just try it again, just to see if I can get anywhere. And after that, I'm done. You don't do it anymore. You're not going to save them. It's not your job to save them. It's God's job. It's God's job who he decides who he wants to save. So you got to remember that. Yep. 
And I think that, that uh, this whole Hiles thing of this hyper soul winning thing, I've been really thinking about that a lot lately and just how it's, it's false. I mean, first Corinthians chapter three, you hear about, you know, Paul says, um, you know, they're saying I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos and whatever. And he says, you know, I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave you the increase. And, you know, this whole thing of the gospel being presented and you're pressured into this, the, praying this prayer and whatever else. And then boom, you're just saved right there. Um, I don't know if I've ever met anybody that actually heard the gospel for the first time and just got saved right then. I mean, most people I've ever met, it's, it's kind of a, you, you'll hear the gospel and you kind of, yeah, I have some other questions and it might take a little while and somebody else, you know, you hear somebody else or whatever else, and, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a process. If you know what I mean, you know, it just, it seems like the, the whole Hiles thing of, you know, the, there's, there's, I'm trying to put this whole thing together to study, but um, it just seems, I still have a lot of study to do on this thing, but um, there's a, there's a thing of people being polite when you first walk up to them. And it's kind of a thing where a thief will take advantage of that, that people aren't always on guard they'll they can get in there really quickly you know kind of attack very fast like a carjacking at a stoplight because people will be kind of nice at first and uh and it's kind of like this hiles thing does the same thing and again you know i used to go to a baptist church that did the hiles method of going out to people and things and you you got to try to get them in there and you you don't let them ask questions you just keep them on that gospel you know road and and then you can brag about how many people you got saved um and it's false. It's just completely false. You're pressuring people into making a decision and it's just not there. And then you can use that to pressure other Christians to prove that you're a better Christian than them. Cause you say, how many souls have you won the award, you know? And so. Question. Do you guys hate breaker finger and Kim? No, we don't hate them, but we don't love them either. You know, we want to see God's justice and judgment, come down on them, you know, because that's righteous. I mean, they, they, uh, I mean, you got to understand what you're dealing with here. When you're talking about people that are absolute Bible gospel perverters, um, you're not, you're dealing with a whole level of evil beyond anything else. Okay. You're talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is not something to play around with. When we do this rebuke here on false prophets, it's serious. It's no game. Um, this is eternity we're talking about here. You have false prophets playing with people's souls. All right. So for us to come down hard on them is a righteous thing in God's sight. It is. They're not saved. They're not going to get saved because, well, they're condemned according to Galatians 1, 9, where it says any man preaches another gospel, they are accursed. So, and they're there to serve their own belly, like Romans chapter 16 says. Mm -hmm. So we don't hate them. But at the same time, we also don't, we don't love them either. There's no scripture where it says we have to love everybody. That's not biblical. Okay. Um, we're called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to people that have not re received it yet. Okay. We love them. We show them love once. Just like Jesus Christ showed his love once for the world at Calvary. We do the same thing. We give somebody the gospel. We're loving them. See, but then they reject that love. Then our love is not for them. Neither is God's love. Okay. God does not love Christ rejecting sinners. Nowhere in scripture does it say that. So, yep. um, need to be careful that whole friendship gospel stuff. I mean, that stuff is satanic. Nowhere in scripture are we called to love everybody. But at the same time, doesn't mean we hate them either. I get that put on me all the time. So. Yeah. Uh, question, brothers. First Corinthians chapter 11, Paul's talking about the Lord's Supper, where people eat and drink damnation unto their self. Is this symbolic of those who make a false profession? False. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, uh, first Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Um, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Of course, you know, the Catholic teaching that the body is physically present in the, you know, wine and bread. is It's not what's being taught there. It's just simply saying you get people in 
that would come into a church building that would come into a gathering of Christians back then and just oh yeah I'm, I'm a Christian they you know basically actually a condemnation of people that have a belief have a head knowledge and they don't really look at themselves and, and say why did Jesus die on the cross and feel guilty that he had to die on the cross to pay for their sins they're not discerning the Lord's body they're not discerning what he went through and so actually what they're doing is actually through their false I think I'm saved I, I believe I'm saved up here they're actually you know bringing damnation upon themselves so I know uh, Alan Bender question should Christians preach God's grace or God's judgment more and the answer is both I mean uh, of course the first thing is God's judgment Paul said knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men so the very first thing a sinner has to understand is that they're under God's judgment they're under God's wrath what's his wrath going to hell for eternity what's the what's the out the gospel believe uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for their personal sins against God that's what saves and that's when when they're under that judgment they understand what they deserve that's where they're having godly sorrow over those sins having repentance and then they're led into the gospel and then they're saved so it's it's both Chris Rauer said, asks, how important is street preaching to you guys? If so, how often? Actually, none of us actually really street preach anymore. I mean, we're all kind of, you know, out on islands, I guess you could say. You really need to be a group of people if you're going to do street preaching. I used to be in the street preaching movement a long time ago uh, until I realized that they're all false and going to hell. But uh, the thing is, is that, you know, Street preaching is good. You know, I wish we had more real Bible believers that could go out and street preach together. I mean, that'd be a great. I would love to stand on a street corner and preach the gospel to people, you know. But it's just hard to go out by yourself. I mean, it really is. I mean, so. But, yeah, I do street preaching. Go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, here here soon, me and my uh, me and my wife are going to get some gospel tracks. And we actually, um, we, uh. My wife helped me discover a newfound love for hiking a lot and uh, like really challenging hiking, like almost rock climbing, but not like too difficult. And uh, there's a lot of people out in the trails around here. So we plan on getting tracks. And while we're out there hiking and climbing and stuff like that, handing them out to people and stuff and uh, trying to preach the gospel out there. Can't beat one on one. That, it's always effective. Yeah. yeah. Um, question here, first John five, six through eight. What, what does it mean that Jesus came by water and blood? Um, well, that's kind of a big one to get into right now. Um, yeah, I can't really get into a whole lot of that right now. That's just, I'm sorry. My mind is just so mixed up right now from that breaker video. I just can't, <laughs> I can't get straight. I apologize. I really do. Uh, All street going to hell. It's getting late here too. So yeah. but, uh, I will say one thing there that Laura Beth before the comment was taken down um, said how many to you other you know, three of you guys how many of you had you how many people have you personally led to the Lord? Um, I'd say quite a few. I'll answer for you um, because if you're preaching the word and people are watching that, um, you're leading people to the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what they do with what you've preached and what you've put out, that's between them and God. Um, again, this hyper soul winning movement of you actually have to physically take somebody through the prayer and then you declare them saved or whatever else. There's so many problems with that whole thing. Yeah. Um, uh, All, right, here's one. All street preachers are going to hell. Um well, if they're part of the whole Jesse Morale, Reuben Israel movement, yes, they are. They all preach a false gospel. They all preach that you have to be sinless. So, yeah, they are. And some of you are like ones that you never heard of before. That's a different story. They're not part of that movement. I'm talking about the big name ones on YouTube. You can go look them up. Team Jesus Preachers, uh, Reuben Israel, Stephen, or not Stephen, but uh, I guess you can say Stephen Harrison too. You might as well be part of it. But, uh, Ruben Israel, Jess Morale, Kerrigan Skelly, John McGlone, Spokane Street Preachers, uh, Christian LaFleur, uh, Micah Armstrong. All these guys are damnable heretics. They're going to burn in hell. I can't stand any of them. They are some the most disgusting men I've ever met. Uh, if you actually got to be around them and actually met what they understand what they believe, 
it makes you cringe, just like Breaker. Yep. Well, I think we're going to pretty much close it down here. Uh, can someone be saved by asking without trusting? Well, we've talked about that the whole way through the video. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, go watch it. I think we've yeah. kind of covered that one. You have to watch the replay. Yeah. Uh, well, let me say something to you real quick. Uh, somebody, I keep, I keep getting, I see him, brethren, they're a fallen gay, the street preacher. Get away from that stinking Pentecostal papist. Okay. Yeah. He's not saved. Yeah, he's he's a devil. So Husky is lost too. That's not true at all. I mean, my word, my two chainsaws are out. No, three. I'm sorry, I have three Husky chainsaws. My three Husky chainsaws are out in my in my shed out there. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, which Husky are you talking about here? You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, you have a husky too, don't you, brother Jeremy? You don't. It's not. Two, uh, yeah, two sixty-two. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe they were talking about somebody's dog. You know, the husky dog. <laughs> yeah, well, right? they lost their doggy. That's sad. Yeah. Poor thing. Uh, okay, here's a real important question right here for uh, a legitimate one for Tim, JT, Brian, or Jeremy. Is there a way I may talk to you about my past testimony? Is I really need to talk to someone about it. Yeah, you can actually email me. My email is uh, actually will tell you. It's eternalredemption16 at gmail.com. So anybody wants to contact me, you're more than welcome to. I yeah. will talk with you. Yeah, and if, they, if anyone wants to contact me on the uh, on my main channel, AVBTM Evangelist Videos, uh, you can, there's a link right there to the Facebook page, and just message me over there, and I'll get, I'll get right to you. Yeah. If you want to talk to me, just uh, just email me at uh, sinners to repentance, all one word, sinners to repentance at aol.com. That's my secondary one. So if you got a question, fire away. Yep. Okay, well, we're going to close it out now. Um, so I'd like to say it was fun, but yeah. it was kind of <laughs> You know, but it just, I'm really getting sick and tired of some of these false prophets and they just go on and on and on. And they just, they're just out there trying to damn souls is all they're trying to do. That's what Robert yeah. Breaker's about. Yeah. Uh, through gonna, consciousness with feigned words, he'll make merchandise of these people. Uh, that's what he's all about. And, um, you know, I, I wish that we could just focus on preaching the word and we wouldn't have people trying to infiltrate our, our, numbers and things i get so sick and tired of having to to expose people and whatever I just like to preach the word but that's just not reality it happened in the first century paul's rebuking people you know and calling them evil beasts and slow bellies and i mean yep. paul was not nice and the lost world they say what if the lost world's watching the lost world is watching and they want to see us take clear stands and if there's all this messiness and whatever else we need to, we need to get that stuff out. We need to judge people that claim to be part of the house of God. Yeah. That's why we did this whole thing tonight. And uh, if we're not willing to judge, if we're not willing to, to kick out these people, you know, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel may continue with you. These people come in and they mess with the gospel. Breaker sounds very legitimate because he steals Peter Ruckman's material. He, mm -hmm. That guy can continue preaching and sounding very legitimate for years on end because he has the commentaries of Peter Ruckman and he can just go through and say, oh, I'll just preach this. And I'll preach that. And people, I can deceive people and get their money. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the gospel and it comes to a few other things, the guy's a total heretic. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So that is going to be it for tonight. And uh, I pray everybody just uh, stays in the word. And uh, you got to learn to fight. Just <laughs> if I give you the best advice, learn to fight, and you and you better get used to it because we are in a war here in this life, and uh, you cannot just play pacifist. You can't do it. No. No. Nope. So, Not at all. Just so no. you know, that's why I'm just so you know. <laughs> 
I'm just so hard with the hammer. I'm not afraid to. You have to be. You know, me and Jared were just talking about this the other day. I mean, again, the whole reason why there's so much atheism is because no one's taking stands. Everyone's getting all wishy-washy. Like all these stupid apologi- apologies, yeah. all, they, all they do is preach, you know, 1 John 4, 8. That's all they do. And atheists are going like, is that it? Obviously, there's more to it. And if that's, if, okay, if God's love, okay, I'll do what I want. Yeah. You know, the day atheists will actually respect the Christians is when we actually are, we actually take a stand like Brian said, and they will actually, you know, we'll see, hey, we're not wishy-washy. These people are different, you know. So, yeah. you know, that's the thing yeah, with atheists too and uh i actually have more respect for certain atheists than i do professing christians because professing christians will will stab you in the back in a heartbeat but atheists will do you right a lot of times i've seen it so many times mm-hmm. i agree with that 100 I've, I've seen it too yep so yeah uh and and you know let me say this too i don't want to sound crude or like I'm being a chauvinist or anything like that. But one of the main things I get is from single women, contentious women. They'll come in the comments. I've never even seen or heard of before. And they'll tell me how to run my ministry or tell me how to say this or say that next one that does that. I'm just going to like, look, where's your husband? You know, you have no business coming along or rebuking a preacher like that. If you're a, wo- a woman. Okay. Not at all. I just, I, I just see that a lot. It's feminist spirit with these people. Yep. So I'll just finish here with uh, scripture, kind of what you were talking about, Brother Jeremy. Um, the thing of the atheists looking and seeing, they, they need to see us taking stronger stands. Acts chapter 5, um, Ananias and Sapphira, we're not going to read all the verses there, but you can read the story. You know, Peter basically rebukes them. They're lying to the Holy Spirit. They've dropped dead. Verse 11, and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. take strong stands. You, you make things happen like that, and you, you cut down people that are false. And the people, they'll say, I don't want to join that, but you know what? They're the real deal because they're not just putting up with anything. Yeah. So Robert Amen. Breaker is fake. He is a fraud and he is going yep. to burn in hell. Yep. And, um, anybody that continues to follow him, they're going there as well. Yep. Um, he tells them what their itching ears want to hear and he makes merchandise of them. So that is going to be it. And we will sign out here. And uh, I just pray everybody stays in the word and um, stand fast. Okay. I was, I was actually going to ask that you want to, did you want to do a prayer against this, against the false prophets before we close out? Sure. <laughs> yeah. If you want to brother, you can, you can lead that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Lord, I, uh, I just pray father that you would really, that you would just cut down these false prophets, that you would just make it obvious that what they preach is false and that the uh, the true brethren out there that are really seeking truth, that don't want to be deceived, that they would just see through these fakes and really just understand the importance of following along in their Bibles, not just looking at some chart being drawn or just something being said or a lot of uh, false preachers just practically paraphrasing that they would just really uh, learn to uh, get their nose in that book and that whenever a, a preacher is wrong on something, they would correct them if that preacher would not heed those words, that he would be rebuked and exposed and that it would just be done on a daily basis because there's just far too many of them trying to infiltrate and trying to always take over and usurp. And I just pray, Lord, they would really be cut down. And in Jesus' name, I just pray and ask all these things. Amen. 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 Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night, guys. Yep. Good night, everybody.